what's up this afternoon, everyone? Welcome, welcome, welcome. Fine Thursday to you all, and fine Manatee Day to you all. Good to see you, good to see you, good to see you. What is up? Day in Wildfire Spotlight, Strange Right, Swing for Zero, Tazzing, or Affinity for Squirtle, the Ben Fun. How is everyone doing today? Hopefully, everyone is having a amazing afternoon. So, uh, yeah, we're doing some. Uh, <laughs> Historic King today. There's still a lot of stuff from this Lord of the Rings that we got to check out. So we are going to start with, I don't even know what to call this deck. Mono White Flash? Mono White Control? Mono White Counter Spells? Basically, you know me. <laughs> I do love making people miserable playing Magic. So uh, we are trying to counter our opponent, but in a Mono White deck. So they're never going to ex expect it. With Mana Tithe and also with Preve. But we also are playing Land Destruction. We've got Demolition Field and Field of Ruid. To go along with even Mind Sensor, which doesn't let our opponent get their basic, hopefully. And also Samwise to get it back. And the rest of the deck, we're trying to play as much Flash stuff as possible. Archangel Avacyn, Restoration Angel, Wandering Emperor. So we can leave up our counters and then still get our opponent. And then, of course, we are playing uh, this card. I don't know if you have played with the Wandering yet. I'm going to say right now... <laughs> This is like the first, the last couple days of the first days I've seriously played a lot with the One Ring. This card's getting banned. This this card is, it, it's like mind blowing how strong this card is. Like it doesn't look that strong. It looks okay. Like yeah, yeah, you know, whatever. You gain you protection for a turn. You draw some cards. This card is game defining. It is like I, I am absolutely shocked at how strong the One Ring is. So uh, of course we're playing a. <laughs> We're playing a full playset of the One Ring just because the card is so bonkers. It doesn't have flash. We can't cast it at instant speed. It is just a ridiculously strong card. And since it's colorless, we can put it in any deck. So we're putting it in our deck to draw lots of cards. Plus, we have ways to answer it. We have ways to reset it. We can, like, soul partition to bounce it and recast it to reset the counters. We can march of otherworldly light it. So that is uh, that is deck number one. We're starting with mono white, mono white counters, mono white draw go. If we play two decks, the backup deck is another deck I'm kind of hyped about. It's Mono Black Orcish Bowmaster's Devotion. So, uh, Mono Black Devotion, <laughs> one of my favorite archetypes. I love me Gary. It rankles, Murderous Riders. It's just like such a. F I love. I just love the archetype. It's such a fun mid rangey archetype. Orcish Bowmasters opens up a brand new style of combo kill. I guess not brand new because uh, we do have a couple other world dreams. But Orcish Bowmasters plus Peer into the Abyss just wrecks our opponent. Plus, we can play the One Ring and draw lots of cards and gain lots of life with Shieldred, so we're not actually dying to our One Ring. So that's the plan for today. Janking around with Manatize and One Rings in Devotion. Yeah, Peer plus uh, Orcish Bowmasters. Really, really good. The One Ring is probably the best four mana value card that currently exists in the game i believe it requires a little bit of something to function a very little bit but you are right like i have seen i mentioned this on twitter the other day i did play a game against someone in modern who like one ranked <laughs> one ringed got protection tapped it to draw cards next turn time warp tapped it to draw cards next turn time warp tapped it to draw cards next turn died to one ring <laughs> that died to one ring damage that was essentially their their uh, their game so there is a drawback you can't if you don't have a plan for it you can die to it but the power is it's like uh, the power is immense this is kind of i guess actually a pretty good representation of the ring back to this thing again i don't know if you watched on the youtube we did the <laughs> against the odds the against the odds trying to win with frodo and one of the things i talked about is how even though the ring tempts you mechanic doesn't have a drawback a lot of the ring cards have a drawback and the one ring is a good example of that like the power of the card is ridiculous but Sometimes the burden does catch up with you. So anyway, let's do a reminder. Start having some fun. Deck looks super fun this week. Hey, thank you, Red Air again, night. Lord Kinaboni. Welcome to the Fish Bowl. Thank oh, I'm that's not a scoops cheer. That's my deck number. Thank you so much for your subscription. Big scoop cheer for you. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Hang on, let me reset this really quick. I'm not sure why we're not getting the not getting the splash sounds for subs. You never you never know. You never know with uh, with OBS. Uh, hopefully that fixes it. Evan Arun proposes the idea of restricting the one ring to one copy in all constructed formats. What do you think? Uh, I mean, it'd be a flavor win, and I think it would. So the part of the one ring that's uh, most frustrating and kind of defeats the purpose of it, and I think that restricting it would actually get rid of it, or making it non-legendary would get rid of it. But the biggest problem I found with the one ring is... 
if you're playing a playset of them, the easiest way to avoid dying to your one ring is just play another one ring and legend roulette. And that doesn't feel very Lord of the Ringsy. Like that's kind of the issue, right? Like you shouldn't be able to just play another one. It's the one ring, the one ring. There's only one of them. Like it's in the name of the card. So you shouldn't be able to just play another the one ring to get rid of the first the one ring. Because if you can play another one, then it's not the one ring. It's just a one ring. So, but I think that would solve the problem. Like if you could only play one of them, that would get rid of it. Or if it wasn't legend, I know it's got to be legendary because of flavor reasons or whatever, but it actually makes it play less flavor flavorfully because that's the easiest way people avoid the damage from it. But anyway, reminders, replay YouTube. That's where you can find all the old streams, including this one in the future. Normal YouTube, tons of stuff going up on there. Tomorrow, we're playing some Lord of the Rings in Modern in a deck I'm, <laughs> I'm pretty hyped about. You're going to like tomorrow's deck. We're doing some cool things in Modern tomorrow. Uh, a reminder that our sponsor today is Card Kingdom. If you need some magical cards, perhaps some some one ring cards <laughs> actually no one rings probably uh, ridiculously expensive but some lord of the rings cards you can get them over at cardkingdom.com slash mtg goldfish if you get a free goldfish sticker just let them know you want one in your order notes and they'll hook you up otherwise merch page tokens t-shirts playmats get away support the stream and the channel and the site donations always appreciate and never require two dollars or more get your message right on stream soren just forged new rings every time you play it wait is that is that canon non-canonical non-canonical <laughs> yeah the one ring is also causing issues on on magic online where it is what is it at the moment a single copy of the one ring 130 dollars, and that's the buy list price not available i i guess there's a a foil copy here for 124 dollars, but it is essentially like this card has taken over magic it has taken over magic there's people like five only in modern with burn decks playing the one ring it's in mid-range it's in control it's in burn like if you're playing a magic deck you're playing one ring because it's that ridiculous but anyway that's that's another topic this deck let's talk about this deck really quick and jump into some games and then we talk about how busted the one ring is our weeks what's bear up to which is chewing on a bone about five feet away uh, how cc's days been whatever else is uh, is going on in everyone's life so anyway this deck mono white counters not the kind you're probably thinking this is mono white counter spells so the plan is to get people to manatize and also with reprieves the new upgraded white remand so we're trying to play at instant speed so we can leave up counters how do we actually win the game so our actual finishers restoration angel archangel avison wandering emperor flash threats we had the one ring to draw ton of cards and then we also have maybe my favorite part of this deck is a sneaky land destruction package you've probably have seen in our mana base four demolition fields four field of ruins the idea is we can combine these with avon mind sensor which only lets our opponent search the top four cards of their library instead of their whole library to hopefully turn them into actual land destruction and then we have samwise the stout hearted which can return a permanent that went to the graveyard from the battlefield this turn to our hand to flash in and get back the ghost quarters in the field of ruins and do it again and do it again hopefully to weigh our opponent's mana base apparently we're missing a card in the sideboard oh it's supposed to be <clears throat> i think the fourth skyclave we got to be able to answer our opponent's one rings that's also that's also a, that's also the world we live in we need one ring and we need to answer our opponent's one rings <laughs> also on the one ring this is going to be this is going to be coming but sneak peek of what's coming on the youtube soon the one ring is like perfect for turbo fog mm, it is it is perfect for turbo fog can't wait until the dream of teleportation circle the one ring to have protection from everything forever i actually okay so i'm glad you brought that up because i actually wanted to put that in this deck but then I then I thought about it. Teleportation Circle just blinks an artifact or creature on your end step. The one ring, I almost missed this. When the wrong ring enters the battlefield, if you cast it, you gain protection from everything. So you can still use Teleportation Circle to reset the burden counters on it, which does have some value, but they actually designed it so you can't take infinite protection. That would be a little a little too good. Errant and Giada could be worth the blue flash. Ooh, I wonder, I wonder if that is worth could be well let's try it we'll go from there yeah that would be a sweet combo if it worked what do you think of nazgul's in modern wouldn't they be great in a heartless summoning shell with sauron and maybe witch cake nazgul's actually coming up for next against the odds in modern that was the the winning card on the last against the odds poll um <clears throat> i've been messing around with them a little bit trying to like test i mean they're they're bad but they're better than i think than I thought they were. They actually snowball pretty effectively because if you can get multiples on the battlefield, they all grow each other and it actually actually gets pretty big pretty fast. Like I didn't realize if you cast a collected company and hit two Nazgul's, 
how big will the Nazgul's be? Do you, maybe everyone knows the answer to this except me because I'm <laughs> I'm bad at math and magic. Uh, ooh, wow. Okay, we will we will keep this hand is. I mean, a little greedy to put the march to the bottom, but mana tithe, stop your thing. Even mind sensor, start field of ruining you. They they come in and they come in his five sixes because they each see and trigger each other. So you have two of them that each trigger twice, four total counters. So if you Coco into them, it actually, yeah, you're exactly worker. It's 10 total power. They're both five sixes. It actually seems kind of good. Like hitting those off of Coco might actually be just like the best things you can hit off of Coco, which is weird to think, but it might actually be true. Oh, these field of ruins not looking great. Ooh, ooh. Ooh. All right, Mana Tithe counter number one. <laughs> number one, add it to the list. <laughs> it did not take long to get our first Mana Tithe counter. All right, we'll play the land, pass the turn. Elves Yuga, welcome to the fishbowl. Thank you so much for your subscription. Big soup cheer for you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Hello, Seth. I noticed uh, use Zuntap overlay. As far as I can tell, you can't search for profiles on there. Does anyone know if his Profile is publicly available. I like to use it because it quickly tells me how many rares I'm missing. I don't know. I've only I've only ever really used Untap to just track my matches. So I actually actually this is probably wrong, right? Do we just take it? Just take the beats. We could flash in salmon block. That might actually be the best play. Let's just flash in salmon block. Flash and Sam, get tempted, kill the recruitment officer. All right, all right. Out of your recruitment officer. Ooh, Brutal Cathar on the empty battlefield. We'll play the land. We probably don't want this to flip. Actually, do we care if it flips? Maybe we don't care if it flips. I mean, we do care a little. All right, well, yeah, let's main phase the mind sensor so the Cathar doesn't flip. Playing against a Nazgul deck with Changeling Outcast and other Changeling and Historic, I died very fast. Yeah, it actually is a surprisingly fast clock. Since they ran out this Brutal Cathar, they might have another one. Uh, running out of Brutal Cathar for no value is the kind of thing you do if either you have a ton of lands and nothing going on, or if you have another Brutal Cathar. That would be another, another reason to do it. So what have y'all been playing with, the, with Lord of the Rings cards? Boy, like, even this scenario... What is this? Enters the battlefield, conjure a card named Sigarden and Avenge to your hand, discard the being next end step. What? This is a... That's an actual card? I mean, I guess it's not an actual card, but it's kind of an actual card? That's kind of actually a real thing? Uh, This isn't good. All right. Come on! No planes in the top four. No planes in the top four. No planes in the top four. Come on. Give us that strip mine. Oh, 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 got him. I think we got him. Okay. That's that's not bad. But now what? How do we not die to Evangels in this flipping? <laughs> okay, so we got a Mana Tithe and a Land Destruction, but that's a lot of dorks. By the way, says, still looking for Lord of the Rings movie with ten, with the Frexians invading. <laughs> yeah, that's that's coming in the next uh, the next trilogy. <laughs> Elish Norn vs. <versus> Frodo. <laughs> Uh, I feel Gandalf the White is Dork Brawl and Sweet. Yeah, Gandalf the White's a cool card. There are, like, so many cool legends in the set. I will I will certainly give the set that. And I feel like it's played better in standard, or not standard, but better in 60-card formats than I expected. <clears throat> so this is going to flip. This is going to have to... <clears throat> this is going to flip. This is going to have to block... I mean, Soul Partition, but then they just recap. I guess Soul Partition's fine. Let's Soul Partition one of these. Bounce and Evangel, pass the dirt. I think this is okay. We really need something bigger. Oh, no. Oh, no, oh, no, oh, no. Oh, boy. We're getting, we're getting severely alchemy at the moment. Opponent gets in. Down to 13. We draw another useless land. Yeah, not not feeling good, not feeling good. Well, go after the Inquisitor Captain. Pass the turn. You missed the first Manatithe. 
As per Sentinel. Mono green beast, eh? Ugh. Repeat is not looking great at the moment. Are we dead? We kill this. Three, four, five, six. I mean, we're not dead, but there's no way we can actually recover from here. We have a new donation from... Okay, what do we want against this creature deck? All the Skyclaves, both the Settle the Wreckages. Wow, huge donation, $20 donation from Twitching Out. Hey, Seth, I copied your Rosie Cotton deck from Budget, Budget Magic, and it's been awesome. I went from silver to diamond since the video dropped. Oh, awesome. I'm glad it's working for you. That's a that's a super good run. Thank you so much for the donation. Has it been fun? Have you, I, I know you said you've been winning with it. Have you enjoyed playing with it? Because that's always the most important thing when it comes to magic. Would you consider playing this in modern with laps of certainty and such? I think we could try it in modern. I think... Huh, I don't know how good it would be. I mean, so in modern, you get another white counter spell, although it is the worst of the white counter spells. So it'd be funny to have another another white counter spell. Yeah, I mean, I think it could be worth it could be worth trying in uh, in modern. I think just to get another counter spell out of it. Thank you so much for the donation, by the way. Definitely appreciate it. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, I think we actually go down with reprieve in this matchup. Reprieve against a dedicated aggro deck's pretty, pretty, pretty sketchy. I almost wish we had like a Bane Slayer or something in the sideboard. We probably actually trim a one ring too. Trim a one ring, trim a mind sensor, run it like that. Purplesaurus Rex, welcome to the fishbowl. Thank you so much for your subscription. Big scoop, Jeffrey. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. It's fun. Sometimes I have to buy into any conspiracy theories about the shuffler, though. <laughs> Ghost Quarter is in historic. I was on the fence. I was on the fence over whether it was worth it or not. Do you think it's worth it? Like, we'd have to run it over... Number two. Number two. <laughs> that is Manatai number two. Out of here, Esper Sentinel. Maybe we should be playing Esper Sentinel. Should we be playing Esper Sentinel? About it. Why no... Why no Thraven Inspector? Gotta have room for the counters. <laughs> Gotta have room for the counters. I mean, really, the goal is to be a deck that plays exclusively at instant speed. That might be too much of a restriction. Like, maybe maybe trying to play only at instant speed actually powers down the deck too much. So there could be an argument for, like, playing just the best possible cards and forgetting the always played instant speed theme. Okay. Yep, yep. Card's actually kind of ridiculous, right? Just, like, play a whole bunch of bodies, grow your stuff a whole bunch. Yeah, it's kind of... kind of ridiculous. All right, opponent. One card, two bodies, goes attacking. Well, we will... Samwise can't even block here. Are we just dead? Wait, why... I'm so confused. Why is this land? Shouldn't we have four mana? Why? Why do we not have four mana? Oh, this. Oh, all right. Oh, I. All right. All right. All right. And apparently, alchemy cards have. Lots of, lots of text on them. All right. Well, I think we're probably dead. Yeah, I, I don't think I've ever played against that card before. Well, we'll play a, we'll play a one ring. Unclear. We got to find a settle the wreckage, basically. So we can't take any damage this turn. We got protection from everything. We get to start drawing cards. Can we find a settle the wreckage? Can we find a settle the wreckage? That is the, that is the question. Vote it. Plays the land. If we find a settle the wreckage, we could get them pretty good. Would you like to attack us, opponent? <laughs> Would you like to attack into the power of the ring? Yeah, this... When it enters the battlefield, conjure a duplicate of it into your hand and it taps something. That is actually, like, a really, really powerful card, isn't it? That card's super pushed. All right. Mana dive. Take some damage. Draw demolition field. 
mana tides draw two okay okay i mean so we didn't hit a wrath but we did hit some okay cards all right opponent wandering emperor and we can't mana tie that Ooh. Ooh. okay yeah 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 that's discouraging about it makes a 2-2 untaps can we survive <clears throat> can we even survive this so it's looking looking scary 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 we can like resto block gonna be close that's a lot of a lot of evangels and we're taking two from the ring about it hell seth it's me but me but they but i play alchemy cards <laughs> hell seth <laughs> about it adeline uh okay yep 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 that's a that's a magic card sort of uh about it counter on the thalia's lieutenant is there a way out of this opponent huge attack trades makes a token Thales lieutenant's five power now yeah that's not looking good not looking good so let's see one two wow i don't even know if we survive this so we can bounce the hopeful initiate this is just so much damage bounce a hopeful initiate play a sam get tempted by the ring not that it really matters block 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 the problem is our opponent's gonna know i bet they play around settle even if we draw it opponent master wait master sword opponent helpful initiate returns all right down to five march other worldly light settle all right we did hit a settle all right well um let's see how greedy our opponent is let's see how greedy they are about it takes up on the dork so we need to look like we don't have settle the wreckage how can we look like we don't have settle the wreckage because we need them to swing with everything okay so march of otherworldly light x2 exile the mana tithe get rid of the thalius lieutenant come on come on come on come on good game should we give the good game oh 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 oh, 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 oh they did it they did it they did it got him <laughs> yes oh okay okay <laughs> staying alive staying alive down oh my god down to four down to one so we have to draw a bunch of cards soul partition the one ring yes we would like to soul partition the one ring play a land replay the one ring pro everything paths the turn the settle the settle actually worked there okay okay can we can we stabilize and take over opponent as per sentinel that doesn't really exactly beat us takes up on the sentinel sure we take zero play the land pass the turn are we gonna get back in this it can potentially gain us some life. Uh, but Adeline would be bad. Esper Sentinel, okay. I think if they attack, we just double Angel and eat their stuff. I think that's best. Opponent combat. 
uh, Restoration Angel. And also Restoration Angel. And eat it and eat it. And comeback time. Comeback time. Comeback time. <laughs> About it. Token. Sure. We could use another answer to the one ring. That would be the that would be the best. Let's get rid of this wandering emperor. Our swords will cross. Four. Uh play the plane. Pass the turn. <laughs> I can't believe we might be winning this game. Opponent, Copper Coat, Vanguard. Goes to combat. Pass this. Well, let's play an Avacid. Play a Wandering Emperor. Oh, All right, you get to draw a card. Tick down. Untap. Go to combat, hit ya. Down to 14. Make a 2-2. Two, two. I think we're gonna win this. I think we're gonna win this somehow. About it. Another Vanguard, sure. And a Barutal Katha, okay. Going after the Avacid. About it. Passes. Oh, Skyclave's pretty good. Well, that's Skyclave. Get rid of the Brutal Cathar. Pay the one, pay the one. Get back our Avacid. Make a samurai. Go to combat. Hit you for three. And I think that's game. I think that's game. Watching the game for the first time, no idea what's going on. Who? Magic can be tricky. Have you ever played any card game snippet? It's a. Uh, if you've played like Yu Gi Oh! or Pokemon. Wow, opponent's swinging out. Uh, okay, so, kill you, kill you, kill you, kill you, actually kill you, block them all. This is also going to have Avacyn flip, which I, is that good for us? Three damage to each other. Oh, we kill one of our creatures. I mean, I think that's still fine. So Avacyn flips. Because we just have lethal, right? Go to combat. Swing. And. Oh, the settle the wreckage. The settle the wreckage. <laughs> that was such a good win. Um, Hearthstone is actually pretty similar. So magic I, I've played some Hearthstone, a little bit of Hearthstone. So, Magic compared to Hearthstone, very similar. The two, the One Ring is incredibly busted. Like, it's, I, I'm at a loss for words at how busted that card is. Um, so, the biggest differences between Magic and Hearthstone, in Magic, you need, your, your resources are in your deck. In Hearthstone, you just get a, I don't know, what is it actually call, called in Hearthstone? Is it a gem? What is it that you get every turn in Hearthstone so you can cast your spells? In Magic, they're in your deck, and you actually have to draw and play your, your resources that you use to cast your spells. That's one of the, the biggest differences. Another big difference is uh, you can't... Uh, in Hearthstone, if you're on defense, you can block your... Wait, no. I'm saying this wrong. You can attack your opponent's creatures in Hearthstone. In Magic, you only can attack your opponent. That's also the mana crystals. That makes most sense. Uh, in Hearthstone, you can uh, attack your opponent's creatures. In Magic, you can't do that. In Magic, you're always attacking your opponent. And your opponent gets to choose if they want to block your attackers with their creatures. So that's the other, the other big difference, really. Wasn't Tomer saying One Ring was bad on Twitter, was he? <laughs> he might have been. I, I might have missed it. But hey, what's up, Animax? Welcome to the stream. 
Hey Seth, rather than soul plus Sam restoration operation would have been more efficient, right? Hey Seth, rather than soul plus Sam restoration, the pre, uh, apparition would have been more efficient. Ooh, maybe. Yeah, it probably would have been more efficient. You might be right. Oh, uh, but it's yes yes in magic weak static creatures with abilities i think are a lot better than in hearthstone yeah something yeah land of war elves would be horrible in hearthstone right like you just couldn't do it because it's just gonna get sniped by your opponent's two drop <laughs> so it's just not gonna do anything oh this is the same hand uh well okay i guess we're destined to keep a one lander unfortunately we're on the draw at least oh, that's for sentinel oh that's another four drop okay that's not looking good that's not looking good yeah if we if i had known we were going to spin into another one lander i would have just kept the first one with the mana tithe <laughs> oh no we gotta draw land here oh boy well, we're seeing another difference between Magic and Hearthstone. <laughs> because of the resource system, in Magic, sometimes you just don't draw lands and you don't do anything. <laughs> that is a that is another another difference. Uh, this game is pretty over. Exile, exile. Wow, we gotta exile two cards to kill a Thalia. Oh goodness. Yeah, there's this is not gonna do it. Oh, the one ring is, uh, the one ring is arguably broken. Like, yeah, this one's super over. Even if we draw lands, we can't get back into it at this point. One lands hands are just sketch. Yeah, that's true. But five card hands are also sketch. <laughs> at least I feel like when it comes to mulling to five, if you mull to five, you know it's you know you're in for a bad time if you keep the one lander on six if you draw a couple lands you're probably good <laughs> Nita, welcome to the fishbowl thank you so much for your subscription big super for you thank you thank you thank you thank you what do you think about delighted halfling and four color omnath i mean delighted halfling is just a solid mana dork i don't think it really like I think it sees a ton of play and it's very good but i don't know if it really changes anything if that makes sense like maybe omnath plays it instead of playing utopia sprawl or something so i think it's like it's very good at its role especially if uh you have legends in your deck but it's also boy we cannot get away from these one landers no matter no matter how hard we try jeez um <laughs> okay i'm starting to believe the the shuffler conspiracies <laughs> we build a deck with all the white counter spells and that's also a one lander all right well uh, I guess we're keeping a one lander on five this time. <laughs> All right. <laughs> that's five. Just so it's clear that five hands in a row, five hands in a row that were, that were one landers. <laughs> five, five. We're playing 24 lands. <laughs> About it. Gets in. It's us pass. Opponent also kept a one. Oh my God. This game. Opponent also kept a one lander. Yeah, okay, we'll we'll do it. We'll do it. <laughs> number three. Number three with the mana dies. I mean, this hand can counter a lot of spells, and apparently our opponent is also not playing magic, so so now we're probably good. Like, our opponent also kept a one lander. Now we can start reprieving stuff to draw cards, and uh, eventually we're going to get to this one ring. Cleric class. You know what? Yeah, we need to hit a land. Let's reprieve it. There we go. Cleric class isn't even good, but <laughs> we can't let our opponent do anything. There's rules. There's rules to this game. All right, we will pass the turn. Opponent, would you like to try to resolve a spell into our mono white counters? <laughs> cleric class. All right, I think we actually let them have that one. Sure, you can have a cleric class. <laughs> cleric class just doesn't do anything, so nothing that I actually care about. Hmm. <laughs> Opponent's even more unlucky than we are. I can see why our opponent's Mythic 76. Actually, question for you, chat. What's the lowest Mythic you've ever seen? I played against someone that was Mythic 48 the other day. I didn't know Mythic went that low. <laughs> didn't know Mythic went that low. I didn't know it was possible. Um, yeah, I guess we gotta get the Manatide value while we can. Boom, number four. 
I mean, we might not always win, but we do get a lot of mana ties. Opponent hits us. And land for the one ring? No, Sam. All right, well, get him with the mind sensor. Pass the turn. Oh, boo. Yeah, how? I didn't know it went that low. So, Mythic goes up to 99%, and then after that, it's numbers up to, from like 2,000 up to 1, I think. So, technically, the best is just number one. It would just be, once you get to the numbers, you know you're pretty high ranked. Does someone mind explaining how mythic percentages work? So, I think the, the I think it's yellow based. So, essentially, you play against someone, your ranking goes against their ranking. If you win, you go up equal to the difference. If you lose, you go down equal to the difference, something. I think that's the, the short version of it. And then once uh, once you get past 99%, you get into the top 2,000 and get the numbered ratings. Spoil for Welcome to the Fishbowl. Thank you so much for your subscription. Big soup here. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank ya. About it. Are you giving up? Have we sucked away their soul with our double mana tithe draw? <laughs> I think we did it. I think we did it. We took a, we took away the soul sister's will to play magic. <laughs> uh, I think it's top 1200 gets the invites, but yes, basically. Oh yeah, oh yeah, it's the percentage that you are of all the players at Mythic, I think. I don't think it's your percentage of all the players. Maybe it is. Because usually when you first get to Mythic, you come into Mythic at like 98% or something. So maybe maybe it puts you at your percentage of all the players when you get to Mythic. And then once you're in Mythic, it's its own thing. That would make sense. Like it's out of all players. And then once you're in Mythic, you, you can't fall out of Mythic. So if you lose 100 times in a row, it's just comparing you to other Mythic players at that point. Wow, opponent has given up. They have given up the will to live. Oh, and that was before the one ring. Yeah, this, I mean, we are going to win this. Not prettily, but one ring. Doesn't even do anything really here, but pass the turn, draw some cards. Busted. Munas! Welcome to the fishbowl. Thank you so much for your subscription. Big super thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you. I have an against odds challenge for you. Make planter of or thank work the way you want it to so i want to see that card be broken Ooh, let me look up that's the one that's like the red gear hulk right let me see if i can let me see if i can look it up yeah, i remember it being a cool card i think it's like uh It's essentially Combustible Gearhawk's trigger, I think. Three mana legendary artifact being your end step. Put an influence counter on it, then scry two, then target opponent may have you draw a card. If they don't, you mill X cards. Rex has a number of influence counters on it, and that player loses life equal to the total mana value of the card. So I think that, so here's going to be the issue with this card to actually, well, that technically counts as a win. <laughs> not the, not the one that we wanted, but we'll take it, I guess. We got, we got a couple good mana ties on the way out. <laughs> So that's a that's a win at least. So here's what I would say with the problem with doing against the odds. With doing against the odds, Planetar. I think a lot of the time it's just going to be draw an extra card and scry two, which is not bad. Like that's powerful. That's a, a Frexian Arena that doesn't cost you life. Like that's a good effect. But I'm afraid like. Uh, I guess the way to build around it would just be to play really expensive cards. Obviously, once your opponent gets low on life, they're not they're gonna let you draw the card. They they can't risk it. So I think the way to build around it would be to play, yeah, like really expensive cards and hope that you can like hit your opponent for 20. Like at the first at like the first uh, the first activation, they're like, oh whatever, like I'm at 20, this is gonna hurt me. And then you flip like an Emerical and a MDFC or whatever and just get them, or I guess it would be the second activation to get two cards. That might be the that might be the way to do it. Plant planet here, plant plan. Pala, pollen tier, pollen tier. I don't even know what this is. It's like a bowling ball. The first thing I thought of when I saw it was the big Lebowski. 
<laughs> to me, it looks like it looks like a movie promo for The Big Lebowski. What is it in Lord of the Rings world? Is it actually like a real thing that that exists? It's like a big it's like a big marble. It's yeah. <laughs> hey, what's up? Uh, what's up, uh, Nudie? How are you? Good to see you. Good to see you. Polanatir. 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 Is that actually how you say it? Polanatir? That sounds like a a sketchy, newly approved drug that you see a TV commercial for. <laughs> Where they read the huge list of side. They're like, hey, get your Polanatir. You know, it'll cure this. And then they go through 30 seconds of like, you could die. <laughs> It's going to hurt when you pee. Uh, any possible thing <laughs> that could go wrong is going to go wrong. But uh, your hair is going to, you know, not go gray so fast or whatever. <laughs> Polantir. Polantir. Okay, that 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 makes sense. Well, I got a one ring, so how bad can it possibly be? Ooh, control? Are you controlling us? We'll see who the real control deck is. <laughs> Can blue light control keep up with the power of our mana tithes? Hopefully not. Well, let's play the land past the turn. So I think what you want to do is try to flash in mind sensor. Oh god, they're doing this. Oh, we might just die. Okay. On second thought, we might be dead. Opponent plays a land and passes well boom even mind sensor resolves i don't play the land go to combat attack you who okay here we go one two one two get that land get that land Come on, no basics. No basics. No basics. What? What? Ta Tails. No, 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 no. Okay, that's that's not that's not fair. Well, hit you with the Sam. Oh, that's that's real bad. That is that is real bad. Who has a stifle? <laughs> yeah, seriously. Magic gods. Okay. The problem is they're going to get <clears throat> the gear hauled. Maybe as soon as right now. And then we're going to lose? Is there anything we can do to not lose to the gear hulk? I don't really think so. Well, that's mine, sons. I mean, we got a bunch of graveyard heat in our sideboard, but... Reprieve. I don't know your Hulk yet. Well, demolition field. Go to combat. Hit ya. Yeah, we gotta go for it. Oh, it resolved. Okay, the one ring. The one ring. We get to start drawing cards. Hey, what's up, uh, Jables McBooties? How are you? Good to see you. Good to see ya, opponent. Yes, Torrential Gear Hulk right now. This is your time. This is your time to Gear Hulk. Mecha Dire! Welcome to the Fishbowl. Thank you so much. Jeez. For your subscription. Big soup cheer for you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank ya. Alright, alright, alright. Pony has a farewell. Boo. Well, play the land. We gotta try this again while your opponents tap down. One, two, three. Aven Mind Sensor. Boom. Demolition field. Come on. Come on. Ha, ah, no planes. We got them. Ha, ha, ha. Ha, 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 ha. How do you like only having five lands, opponent? <laughs> the punk. Welcome to the vision. Opponent, will you chill? Will you chill with this wrathing opponent? Welcome to the fishbowl. Thank you so much for your subscription. Big soup cheer for you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you. Well, okay. I guess we just pass. See what our opponent does. Finds a land. Well, one, two. 
Uh, are we just turning on the torrential gear hulk mostly? Boom. Blow up the land. Wait. Oh, they didn't get a basic. Oh, they didn't get a basic. Oh, no. Opponents in max greed mode. Opponents in max greed mode. Sam, get back that field of ruin. And uh, yeah, I think we're going to keep doing this to you. Opponent. <laughs> yes. Okay, now we know our opponent's only playing a single basic. Mmm. <laughs> okay, teaching arena zoomers about strip mines. <laughs> <laughs> that was that was uh, actually actually kind of sweet. Actually kind of sweet. <laughs> oh, oh, what do we want against hardcore control though? Rest in peace seems good. To fairies pro maybe? Just peace out of there. Settle the wreckage, not great. Our counters seem good. Our land destruction seems wonderful. I think they're playing Lotus Field. I think that's the main thing we gotta be. We got to be upset of, uh, or be cautious of. Oh, did did any of you try? Um, did any of you try getting the Lord of the Rings Commander precons from Amazon? Uh, there's this thing. I was curious if it was if it happened any uh, anyone here. Apparently, <laughs> apparently they've been shipped wrong. And there was, like, almost to everyone. Like, if you ordered the four Commander Precons, you would only get one of them instead of all four. Oh, did someone? Okay, so it did happen to, to someone that we know, sort of. Yeah, and then apparently, even more sketchy, apparently after people started giving them bad reviews, they just took in deleted the listing and started over because they were legitimately getting one star reviews because they were they were not shipping the things that they were supposed to ship <laughs> so so sketchy so sketchy yeah i mean pal pal and tier pal and tier okay okay i can i can do that i got it i got it <laughs> I got gotcha. you. We're I'm working on it. <laughs> I'm working on it. Is Teferi's Pro even worth it? Probably not. Let's uh, one Teferi's Pro. Let's run it like that. Alright, on to game two. Are we the best control deck now? Is Mana Tithe on the top of the format? <laughs> oh, I do enjoy Hool. I mean, we're gonna keep this. I mean, we have, like, z literally zero action, but Mana Tithe Rest in Peace seems good against our opponent's deck. It, oh, if we can get their Lotus Field activation with the Mana Tithe, oh, that would be so good. Um, Yeah, we're going to wait on the rip. Pass the turn. Opponent. Aw. Oh. Um, all right, play the land, pass the turn. Let's let's do it the slow way. Magma opus for our opponent. Opponent passes. We'll play the land. Hmm. Yeah, let's pass one more turn. We got two counters in hand. We got two counters. We're, we should be good. We should be good. Opponent. Oh! 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 Oh, oh, the brutality, the brutality, bounce it back and the treasure's gone, oh, oh, that one had to hurt, that one had to hurt, uh, let's play a land and, uh, rest in peace, opponent, going to bounce our rest in peace, now we'll play another rest in peace, Pass the turn. Oh, now we just need the mind sensor to start going after the mana base. That's the last piece of the puzzle. Double mana type for protection. Opponent. Passes. Yeah, Sam, Sam's not going to be as good this game with the rest in peace out. Opponent. Nah. Nah. We're not doing that. We are not doing that. <laughs> mana type number five. <laughs> oh my god! 
in number six rookie in a row. Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh, oh. Those were two really good spells, and now we get to resolve the one ring. <laughs> oh. How do you like us now, Teferi? How do you like us now? <laughs> so good. So good. Found it. Land. And. Fragment reality. Well, we better draw a card. Sure. We get a Sam. Uh, you can be the ring bearer. Opponent passes. Oh, there's another one. Shh, shh. There's another one. There's another one. Go to combat. Attack. Opponent <laughs> takes the beats. Are we gonna win this? Are we gonna win this? Is this happening? Opponent's gonna scry. We're gonna ruin their scry with demolition field. Oh, they don't even scry. Okay, that's also fine. Opponent sounded nine. Can we get one more mana tithe for just the ultimate rub ins? Opponent untap land. No fear. Well, okay. Let's uh. Let's run out a Avison. Okay. And scoops it up! Oh! <laughs> that was so good. That was Manatide at its absolute finest. Reprieve it. Bounce the Memory Deluge back to your hand. Manatide the Memory Deluge. Manatide the Teferi. Beat the control deck with mono white counters. <laughs> Ivan the okay. Welcome to the fishbowl. That was... I mean, that was about as good as we could imagine with this game. Hmm. Hmm. Why do people not play Mana Tide? Like, why is Mana Tide not a, not a staple level card? Shouldn't it be? Shouldn't it actually be a good, like, a, a card that people play? Not just me. I know we play it all the time, but... <laughs> I hate how much I'm enjoying Battle White Control. Come to the dark side. There's nothing... There's nothing like getting people with Mana Tide. It is literally one of the best feelings in all of magic it is at the at the very top yeah this is historic manatide was gaze at rcq Prague, best card ever mm, yeah it, is, it really is manatide is only historic uh it's in modern it's in modern not in pioneer unfortunately but it's modern back and also in historic it, it seems like fringe play in modern open deck list does does make it a lot worse the thing is, like, the playing around it part, it kind of goes both ways. Like, yes, sometimes your opponent plays around it and it's a bad thing. On the other hand, you can do the trick where on, like, game one, you get someone with a mana tithe. And then you could even sideboard it out in games two and games three. And you'll watch opponents leave up an extra mana every spell for the entire game. It ends up being, like, like a Thalia, just, like... It, it being in the opponent's head, the idea that the mana tithe could still be there ends up making them play like a, <laughs> making them play like there's a Thalia on the battlefield for the rest of the game because they just don't want to get got by it. It's the the psychological damage. Mm. I have <clears throat> I have a question, chat. Something uh, something that came up. I was curious. So, hmm. Sand slow. I think we mulligan. Yeah, let's mulligan it. Well, sand is also slow, but we're gonna we're at six, so we're gonna keep. So I have a question for you, chat. Do you have in sixty card formats? In sixty card formats, not commander. Commander is different. In sixty card formats, do you have some? moral responsibility to be enjoyable decks decks that your your opponents would find uh, your opponents would theoretically find to be enjoyable to play against this came up on twitter because i was tweeting about <laughs> teaching Are arena zoomers about turbo fog which hopefully we will be doing in the near future um i was tweeting about that and there was a couple couple people that said like 
uh, you have some like a moral essentially what what i took from it is you have some moral responsibility to like try to make your opponents have fun and like if you're playing if you're playing turbo fog or blood moon or prison decks like you're taking away your opponent's enjoyment so you're like doing something wrong essentially uh, that was uh, that's how i took it not a direct quote so if i'm uh, misquoting it in some way like uh don't take don't take it wrong but i never thought of that before i never really thought like I, my view had always been like wizards gives us game pieces and then you can't put those game pieces together in a way that would be like unfriendly or like bad or evil or something like i never really it had never occurred to me that someone might think there that was a thing so it was a perspective that i'd never really thought of before i don't think i agree with it <laughs> plus i i love playing prison decks too much to agree with it um no this is not gonna go well i think commander's different i think commander's different oh we got a we got a new donation from a twitching out five dollar donation hey zeth do you think lord of the rings will be the biggest ip that wizards will get or do you think they could get marvel or star wars would you even want that um, oh, Lord of the Rings is going to be hard to top. Boy, I don't know how we possibly get out of this. Interpony has a one ring coming, and we can't use our one ring because they have... Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Yeah, we're not. We're not going to get back in this one. Thank you for the donation twitching out. I think Star Wars is a possibility. I don't know how Marvel licensing goes. Like, I'm not sure if that's a... Is that a possibility? Like, would Marvel ever consider just, like, giving the rights to their IP to Wizards? I'm not... That I'm not sure about. I'm not certain that, uh, that that's an actual thing that could possibly happen. But uh, I do think Star Wars seems like a good possibility. I will also say, I, I think the Commander is different. There's no way... There's no way that... Uh, in commander i would play things that were intentionally going to make people not have fun in 60 card formats i do not feel even a little bit bad about that <laughs> but in in commander i do feel very bad about that so i tend to like go out of my way to like in commander i won't play blood moon blood moon is one of my favorite cards even if it's a mono red deck where blood moon would like be essentially harmless to me uh, i just won't play it because in commander i want everyone to have a good time 60 card formats though <laughs> As far as I'm concerned, in 60 card formats, all all bets are off. All bets are off. You can do whatever you want. Oh yeah, we got the we got the mana tithe tracker. You gotta have the mana tithe tracker. Well, okay, so we get to mine sensor and then start strip mining. Seems reasonable. Opponent, labyrinth, and a mine stone. Oh, all right. Come on, settle settle down with those mana rocks. Even mine sensor. Unfortunately, doesn't stop Karn. Karn is ridiculous. <laughs> Surging the sideboard, not got by Mind Sensor. Uh, ooh, well, okay. Go to combat, hit ya. We might just have to play the one ring. Go to combat, hit ya. Yeah, I think we do. Play the one ring, start drawing cards. Little worried about Karn coming down, but I can't do anything about that at the moment. Opponent. My first modern deck was Restore Balance. I thrive on my opponent being salty. I mean, that's how I learned to play Magic. For me, I think I've told that story before a long time ago. Mm, I would definitely play Laps of Certainty in this deck. I think I just told this story a long time ago. Um, the way I learned to play Magic, I started off super, super, super casual. Like, my buddy had a big box of cards. We were in college. Got it from got it from his mom's house. This big box of mostly mirrored in cards. T. Baron, welcome to the fishbowl. Thank you. Oh, oh no. Okay, this one doesn't count. I was trying. I copy and pasted the scoops cheer emo into the chat, and I hit enter for the scoops cheer emo. But apparently, I was hovering over arena or my mouse must have been for some reason the arena was active so it passed the turd we were actually in good shape there because we could play the wandering emperor pump the <laughs> uh pump the fire and kill the carn and go back to drawing cards but yeah that scoops cheer for a uh, t barton got us uh got us good yeah that was that one doesn't count that one doesn't count that's not manatized fault that's 
Uh, I think T Barton, I guess. We're blaming you, T Barton. <laughs> we man, I tied the road turd. But we had a big box of just casual cards. We were playing like super ultra casual janky stuff, and then a uh, another friend like was like, "Oh, y'all are playing magic. I got magic cards," and started playing with us. And was playing like first deck was stasis lock, second deck was scepter chant, like just these like fully fully powered up super miserable prison decks. And it was the worst. I, I absolutely, I got to the like flipping the table, like the flipping the table stage. And I don't really get salty about stuff for the most part, but oh my goodness, I would, oh, it's so brutal. Like I was brand new to magic. I'm playing some janky like mirrored in charge counter deck with like eight drops and like just hor Eon Storm. And I'm just getting like stasis locked out of the game. I'm getting scepter chanted out of the game. It was, it was brutal, but eventually I knew I had to beat it. I knew I had to beat it. So I'd keep going back and I was like, okay, how can I beat this? How can I possibly stop this stupid enchantment that won't let me untap and cast my eight drop artifact creatures? How can I stop this, uh, you know, silence coming every turn off of Isochron Scepter? There's gotta be a way to do it. And as tilting as it was and as frustrating as it was, beating it was the best feeling once i eventually found a way to be able to beat it it was one of the best feelings that magic has to offer like as frustrating as it was getting there the reward was super worth it to be able to uh to be able to finally beat it so i don't know i always have a high tolerance for for uh prison archetypes and so forth probably because of that experience just how i started to play so i'm sure it's not the same for everyone but for me the uh, that quest of being able to figure out a way how can i actually beat this thing that's a lot of what made me fall in love with magic as i was like <laughs> getting absolutely wrecked by stasis and scepter chance and whatnot it is it's like beating the end boss it feels impossible you can't do it you're like no there's no way there's too much hp there's no way i'm gonna be able to do this but then when it finally happens oh man does it feel good it makes up for all the all the losses i mean in a lot of ways it's it's the against the odds theory right like yes we're gonna lose a lot but eventually we're gonna do this really sweet thing and that thing's gonna gonna make up for all the losses along the way when we get that win when we get that one shot frodo kill when we get the you know whatever it whatever it happens to be that we're trying to pull off that's gonna make up for all the all the losses along the way when i first started royal assassin was the thing of my existence that's uh that's old school that is that is old school you must have been playing like were you playing an alpha yeah, let's reprieve it. Opponent passes. We draw another Sam. Hmm. How do we deal with this? Narset's the thing. Our opponent just keeps playing Narset. Oh. Hmm. I want a one ring, but then they Narset. We, so we one ring, we draw a card. They Narset. We soul partition. Try to bounce the Narset. I guess that's fine. Yeah, let's, let's do it. Run out the one ring. I think this is fine. This Narset is an issue and it's super obnoxious, but hopefully it's worth it. All right, there's an R set, so we will draw a card. All right, Field of Ruin, sure. Back when Hollow One was actually a good deck in Modern, I once got three Hollow Ones on the field on turn one. Opponent was not happy, but the people watching me were, oh, that, that's like the Hollow One dream. How'd you beat it? Eventually, I, eventually I learned that it was actually Scepter Chant. It was so a big, big box of original Mirrodin cards. Digging through these cards. How do I stop it? How do I stop it? There's got to be a way. If I remember right, the solution was actually just shatter. Like, the boringest, simplest, like, not like boring his hands or just destroy an artifact to instant speed. That was... That was the... That was all he needed. That was the, the missing piece of the puzzle was... Was something as, as boring and common as a shatter. But that was, uh, that was enough. That was enough. Hmm. I mean, I guess we just plan our opponent's turn. Yeah, let's let's just pass. Try to do stuff on our opponent's turn. 
This is gonna get interesting. Opponent. Oh, wait, okay. Well, if our opponent's gonna do this, then we're gonna bounce the Narsat. I won't forget our time together. And then we're gonna Sure, you can island cycle. One, two, three, four, five. So now we get to go back to drawing cards, which is big. Opponent shh, grabs an island. Sure. About it. A lot of control decks. A lot of control decks today. Opponent land Narset. Well, we will draw two cards. And all right. Narset takes it down. Fines. What is our opponent trying to set up with all this land cycling? Static discharge. And passes. Well, let's. Wandering Ember. Do you have counters? Reprieve. All right, we take some damage. We draw a mana tithe. Hmm. Oh, we know they have static discharge too. This Narset's so annoying. Why do wizards print these cards? <laughs> why wizards, why? So in both their lands, does that even matter? Oh, play the land. We don't have a way to get the Narset off the battlefield. One, two, one, two, three, one, two. <laughs> yeah, I don't, I don't think we should tap the ring for fun. <laughs> that would be a risky plan. I mean, I guess we just pass and keep trying to play at instant speed. I don't know, maybe it would have been better just to fire up the Cave of the Frost Dragon. That might actually have been a punt not to just go right after the Narset with the cave. Hey, what's up, uh, Jeremy Shallow? How are you? A opponent takes down Narset. Deals X damage to our creature. X is the number of instant sources in your graveyard. Excess damage is dealt to the creature's controller instead. Okay. Is our opponent playing a burn deck? All right, static discharge. And, well, okay, we will Wandering Emperor. Oh, horrible auto-tapping. Horrible auto-tapping. Opponent reprieves it. I'll run out of even Mind Sensor. Fiery Impulse, is it? Okay. Well, opponent has a lot of burn. I will I will give them that. Well, now we definitely have to try to get rid of this Narset that's just ruining our day. Cave of the Frost Dragon. Kill the Narset. Narset down. You are a mighty warrior. Pass the turn. Oh, that did not go ideally, though. Are they a burn deck? Is our opponent actually literally a burn deck? Well, I guess we gotta mana tie that. <laughs> hey, Seth, do you think Dawn Charm would be a good card to bring back into standard? I think that would be sweet. Dawn Charm is one of those one of those underrated underrated white counter spells. I wonder if it's considered too good. Like, do you think it's considered to be too good for standard? Wizards tends to be pretty conservative with fog effects. Come on now. Another Narset. Opponent. Oh, hey, Seth, wonder why we're playing historic and not modern. Is historic popular again? I mean, we got a bunch of new cards for Historic, which is sweet. Modern, uh... Hmm. 
So many Narsets. Well, I mean, I guess we just gotta go for it. Like, what else can we really do? I do kind of hate Narset. I'll attack Narset. <laughs> Flame of Andor. Yeah, I think we're... I think we're pretty dead now. Oh, Narset's such a miser... Such a miserable card. One of the worst. And prepare. Uh, I mean, so the thing was with Modern is... This deck is leading with Modern, which is why I asked. I don't think the deck really would have the ability to... I think this would be an, a, a super against the odds deck in Modern. I... I... I don't know. I would worry about the deck being able to keep up with modern. That would be that would be my big concern. I think that it's maybe got a got a more realistic chance to win once in a while playing it on arena. So I think that's that's one of the big things. The other thing is just I don't know. I think arena's generally arena works well for streams we do. I like to do modern streams too, but I think there's there's upsides to uh, to just visually and functional uh, functionally to streaming on arena. Like we can get in games faster. We can try out a couple of decks. That's pretty. That's pretty hard to actually do in uh, in modern for the most part. Well, all right, go to combat. Attack Narset at number two. Boo, 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 boo. Swing at the Narset. Opponent. Did you draw into another answer? Another fiery impulse. Okay. Well, we'll play. Oh, we can't even really play Sam, can we? Oh, I hate Narset. One, two, three, four. Play another one ring. Opponent finds another reprieve. Well, let's blow up this down to the bugbear. I expect our opponent has basics. It's worth it's worth checking to see. I'd be I'd be surprised if they're playing zero basics. I think players have learned that you have to play you have to play some basics. Okay, how about soul partition on the one ring? About it. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Um, well, play the land. Yeah, I think we're just dead now. Too many Narsets. Opponent considers. Opponent. I am mostly only seeing the One Ring and Delated Halfling being played in Modern on Moto. Yeah, the One Ring is sort of broke modern. Oxy Tommy, welcome to the Fishbowl. Thank you so much for your subscription. Big soup for you. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Yeah, Modern is... I mean, I love Modern. Overall, Modern's my all-time favorite format. It has gotten much less creative since Modern Horizons 2 came around. That is that is kind of one of the biggest drawbacks of Modern. Like, Modern Horizons 2 came around, and it really, really just... All right. Well, we see what our opponents... There, I guess they're trying to play Counter Burn, I guess I would call their deck. Uh, that was definitely obnoxious, especially the, just that NAR set was incredibly annoying. That, that was definitely brutal. Um, well, set of the wreckage doesn't do anything. Creature removal doesn't seem to do anything. NAR set removal does something. I mean, I think we just gotta not get so far behind. Like, we need to not get so far behind so we can, 
I mean, we just can't get locked behind the Narset. I think that's the the TLDR. We have to not get locked under the Narset or this is going to go poorly. Yeah, I mean, the One Ring is essentially just broken mod. I, I do not really see a world where the One Ring does not get banned. I the card it's not obvious until you play with it it is an absolutely over the top card and it's just showing up in like every archetype that's kind of the that's kind of the issue with these really powerful colorless cards is it's not like okay like it's you know whatever it's really good in a deck there was you know in spoiler season i was kind of like oh carl the great creator you can tune that up on the sideboard that's gonna be good it's not like it's a, a tron card or you know a good in a specific archetype card it's just uh, like every deck is playing it burns playing it controls playing it omnes playing it tron's playing it you name a any artifact deck is playing it you name an archetype and they're playing it i i i have a hard time envisioning a world where it doesn't end up banned like the different yeah that's the thing like the turn of invincibility the protection from everything can a card that sees eight percent play what is the card that's uh are you talking about the one ring i wouldn't i wouldn't put any i wouldn't put i wouldn't even put a tiny bit of weight into play rates at this point just because it is essentially impossible to play with <laughs> that is one of the other reasons we're not playing modern today uh is the one ring is like the hype card that everyone wants to play and it is essentially impossible to get like if you do want it you can spend like 150 dollars a copy on it but even if you're willing to do that you probably won't be able to find copies like the the biggest and most popular bots the biggest and most popular bots uh just don't have access to them like they're they're not they're not there do you think reanimator would play it hmm so i i mean so you gotta always wonder when it comes to like some of these things if people are being serious or if it's just like a meme to flex and like show that they could do it well it's a good time for mana tithe but like we saw burn my initial instinct would be fast combo decks are probably the decks that would want it the least so reanimator being a fast combo deck i would be like eh, probably not but at the same time i would not think burn would be the kind of deck that people would would play it in and people are like 5 with it in burn at this point people are just jamming it in literally anything <laughs> like they are jamming it in any archetype they can possibly jam it in well get in hit you past the turn what have been nice to draw land there tron is a definitely a good shell for it. i think the omnath shells are probably some of the best shells for it omnath like gains you back to life you're already ramping into stuff so i think the omnath is a is a pretty obvious home for it none of the top four decks play it i mean it's just it's so it's so early it's like so hard to read much into much into anything because of the supply issues like there's just it's hard to really say how how much play it would be seeing if it was available like that's the that's the big issue right now is it's just like i don't even we looked at it at the beginning of the stream go bots is usually like for just snagging a card one of the easiest ways to do it uh, and one of the uh bots they have the highest supply i guess now they have what they have two, three foil copies one non-foil copy for 130 bucks a piece so if you want to play a modern deck you have to literally to get a place that you're going to be spending five five hundred six hundred dollars that's absurd like that's they're gonna have to do something about it if there was a one of one ring on moto how much would it cost i actually don't think it would be that high like i think it would be worth something but i don't think it would be ridiculously high just because i don't know if moto players really really care that much about the bling like it'll be worth more than a normal one but i don't think it'd be worth millions of dollars or anything like that yeah, it'd basically be like yeah, basically would be like an NFT. I mean, maybe what would the high end be? Maybe like I maybe a thousand dollars. That would be my guess. And maybe not even that. That might be the high end. Although at the same time, I didn't think the actual paper one would be millions. 
I was thinking hundred thousand dollars or something, and that's that went way further than I ever would have imagined. So maybe I'm maybe I'm guessing low on that too. <clears throat> yeah, get, open the one in one ring and get banned. Moto is NFTs though, right? I mean, oh, there it is. Flame of Andor. I'm gonna go two modes. So is Moto NFTs, I mean, I guess kind of, like they are digital objects. I think, I think they have more utility, I guess would be, would be what I would say is the biggest difference. Like, isn't part of the criticism of NFTs is like, they're just, they just exist to be financial objects, essentially. They don't have any actual utility. They're essentially just, like, stocks. Moto, at least, the, the cards are created with a purpose to play the game. And the cards that are expensive are actually, like, heavily influenced by that. Like, the, the cards that cost a lot of money are the cards that people play with a lot. So, I think that's where it's a little bit different than NFTs. Yeah, they actually have utility as game pieces. But at the same time, if you're looking at it from the like, oh, they're digital, digital objects or whatever. Yeah, that, that part's a little bit true. Well, let's reprieve. These sky claims hopefully will come through to deal with this Narsa and let us keep drawing cards here. And we're at 20 this game, which is a lot better than we were at before. Flame of Andor looked good though for our opponent. Did you see, oh boy. I should look this up on Amazon. I have practiced against many I have just the trick for this. I saw some prices on Twitter for Commander Masters, and they were kinda ridiculous. <laughs> still have much to I'm actually starting to get a little worried that the price of magic has just significantly gone up. Let's draw now, actually. Okay, okay. Restoration Angel's good. I'm starting to worry. Do you think the price of magic has just gone up? Like, maybe prices are increasing. We just haven't really realized how much that's happening. Static Discharge. Uh, yeah, I guess there's not really any reason to blink it, so sure. When one ring goes unchecked, it draws a lot of cards. Demand's probably part of it. Although I think part of it is wizards maybe just increasing prices intentionally. Um, yeah, let's let's resto. About it. I'm sad now that I have the money to spend. I can't let my college dream of buying a booster box every set. It is getting harder, isn't it? Just price-wise, it's getting harder. I'll draw some cards. Found a mana dive. Play the land. Pass the turn. The one ring is so much card advantage. How is our opponent at eight? Did they do that to themselves with their mana base? Oh my goodness, they did. Opponent plays the land. Goes to combat. Well, let's restoration angel. Opponent has another reprieve, okay. And we'll take three, down to 14. Static discharge for five? Oh, that's, that is kind of ridiculous. Okay, down to nine. Well, run out the even mind sensor. about it why is this dealing infinite damage deals damage equal to its oh it's it's in t intensity then perpetually increases the density and all the intensities all the <laughs> oh wizards 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 silly silly wizards in their their alchemy designs <laughs> oh how do we want to do this Opponent has three cards in hand. How do we do this and not die? That's the, that is the question. 
We can't really keep taking damage. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Let's cast out. Get rid of the token. Play the tap land. Oh, we might just get burnt out. Opponent's playing a lot of random burn spells. A lot of random burn spells. About it. Yeah, I mean... I feel like the, the digital-only cards are actually... are actually some of the least offensive of the alchemy cards. Personally, I find the rebalance cards to be way more offensive. Wait, did they not get a land? Oh God, they didn't get a land. Oh God, but we're dying to our one ring. Oh no. Oh, we gotta find an answer. We gotta find an answer. Okay, one ring, draw infinite. Oh no, the burden, the burden's getting too great. Oh. Okay. So we have to one ring away our one ring. Is there a way we can do this and make it resolve? I mean, we have a bunch of strip mines, which we can use. All right, strip mine you. Opponent floats a mana, loses a land. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. <sighs> angel only blinks creatures, unfortunately. Can exile a non-angel creature. Now play the land. Pass so they lose their mana. Opponent's going to consider. Leaves it to the top, which I'm sure is not good. Okay, so we gotta play the one ring. Opponent. Somehow drew another reprieve. Okay, play a one ring. Considers. Mills a land. All right, Flame of Andor to draw a couple of cards, but we get a one ring. All right, not dead yet, not dead yet. I don't know if we're alive, but we're not dead. Discard six, two, three, four, five, six. All right. All right, opponent. <laughs> oh, we can strip mine some lands, but not all of them. And any, any burn spell just kills us. That's the issue. Oh, this is so close. Opponent, untap land down to six, passes. One ring ticks up. Wandering Emperor. Well, we'll play a land. Yeah, we can't strip mine all of them. Strip mine. We're trying. <laughs> Opponent floats a mana. We'll take a planes. Strip mine. Opponent floats a mana. Oh, they just have it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the auto tapper is really. <laughs> the auto tapper is so bad. Wizards never really figured out how to make a, a reasonable auto tapper. Ha. <sighs> that was a weird matchup. I wonder, maybe we should needed to start attacking their lands sooner. 
A reminder that our sponsor today is Card Kingdom. If you get some magical cards, you can get them over at mtdgoldfish.com or cardkingdom.com slash mtdgoldfish. Yeah, it was a really interesting game. We didn't win, but it was interesting. This deck, it plays in an interesting way. Like, it's stuff that you don't usually see on Arena as far as, like, land destruction. I mean, obviously, Mana Tithe. Could have activated the Man Land to itself and then exiled it to Emperor, but we would not have had a Strip Mine. Yeah, I don't know if that would be... Ah, it's so much mana. So you need five, six for the Creature Land, and then... So you need six for the Creature Land and then four for Wandering Emperor? That's... That's a lot. That's a lot to gain two. Ooh, Luris, eh? Been testing flowering the white tree in mono white humans and moderns. It's been lackluster at best. Does mono white humans have enough? Does mono white humans have enough? Um, Dread toward Arcanist. Hmm. Yeah, being on the draw here is awkward. So they get to Arcanist. Do mono white humans have enough legends? I feel like Flowering of the White Tree really needs needs to be in a legendary deck. Although legendary decks have their own issue where you got a ton of legends and you gotta figure out a way to to actually Alright, opponent. Free Arcanist value. You gotta figure out a way to get around the legend rule. It tends to be clunky. That's kind of the other problem with the Kiln Fiend. That's kind of the other problem with the Flowering of the White Tree itself is it is also legendary. Well, um, I guess we reprieve it. Pick him up, pick him up. I could see our opponent not be playing any basics. That is, that doesn't seem like too big of a stretch. At least March of Otherworldly Lights seem decent. Well, I guess we just pass for now. Let's pass, see what our opponent does. Kill something. Oh, boo. Mono White Legendary Devotion sounds sweet. Hey, Seth, did you catch a Bills game this year? Uh, I didn't go to a Bills game. I saw I saw several on TV. I try to I try to catch them sometimes uh, on TV if I can. But actually going to Buffalo to a Bills game, gotta sit out in the cold. <laughs> Buffalo, Buffalo's. Uh, maybe I'll go to an early season game this year. It is fun to see live, but boy, the winters in Buffalo are not great weather for sitting in the outdoors. Oh, don't it? Blossoming defense. Well, planes, and I guess we just one ring. Kill us now, Kill and Fiend. Kill us now. Do your absolute worst. Play with fire our face. Sure. Down to 16. Scries to the bottom. Pro everything. And here comes the cards. Can you beat the one ring? Can you beat the one ring? Did you want to catch one this year? I wanted to see if you wanted to go to one. I'd leave an update as well. Hey, yeah, let me let me know. Yeah. Send me send me an email or something. We can set something up. That'd be super fun. Do you go to a lot of a lot of the home games? Uh I am I am the Gend. Man, well, let's draw. You know what would be sweet here is a Settle the Wreckage. Settle the Wreckage would be super sweet. Uh, let's draw. Ooh, that's no Settle the Wreckage. Well, okay. Let's think about this. Play the land. March of Otherworldly Light. X2. Pitch a Mind Sensor. Get rid of the Arcanist. And pass the turn. See if the Wandering Emperor can save us or if we die to a bunch of spells and Kiln Fiends. Opponent. Another Arcanist. And combat. Well, let's Wandering Emperor. And, and I will protect my people. Hmm. Yeah, I mean we gotta go for it. Exile the Kiln Fiend? Do you have a blossoming defense? 
Oh, oh, it worked. Okay. Oh, that's huge. That is huge. We take zero. Another Lumamancer. Oh, show us settle the wreckage. Show us a settle the wreckage. Well, we are going to make a two-two. Years of training. This, we must protect the play a land. And you know, I think we just pass. Pass the turn. See if Sam can save us. About it. Wow, everyone, so many, so many upstate New Yorkers here. What are the chances? What's with the manatee counter on the left side of the stream? That's uh, that's how many manatees we've gotten. That's really the goal of our stream is to just see how many, how many times we can manatee people. <laughs> that's that is our our primary goal. Opponent's gonna play with fire. Well, we're gonna draw a few one ring cards. Wandering Emperor. Snipe the Arcanist. But I'm going to end it. <laughs> All right, Pony gets to play with fire. Hits our blocker, pumps, pumps. Well, let's play a Sam to do some chumping. <laughs> Oh, the stupid fat hobbits coming through. <laughs> About it. Oh, we have reprieve too. Manatee is just our iconic, our iconic jank, uh, jank counter. But we also have, we also have the full place at a reprieve. We're, we're doing both. Well, tech down, make a door. See you later. Our hand is not ideal at the moment, is it? I wonder if we can, you know what, let's draw. Let's draw main phase, see what we find. Uh, soul partitions are good. We are gonna have to soul partition the one ring at some point. Play the land. Actually, maybe we just do that now. Yeah, let's soul partition one ring. <laughs> Pick it up. Oh, opponent, 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 opponent. Uh, one ring? How about this again? This card's ridiculous. Protection. Would you like to try to kill us, aggro deck? <laughs> My apologies. It's not happening today because we have the one ring. <laughs> oh, what a card. What a card. Oh. Opponent. Gonna go to combat. Bring it. Bring it, Loris. Uh, let's draw with the one ring. Yeah, we'll get a basic... Oh, there's the settle. Okay, the basic land check's coming now that we got the settle. Now that we got the settle, we are, we're super good. And that will also give us a basic land check. Uh, discard a land. <laughs> Come on, opponent. Swing out. Swing out. Show us what you got. Oh, man. Oh, dear. Oh boy. Oh no. Oh no. The moment before the disaster. <laughs> GG. Oh, we didn't get a basic land check. <laughs> and Josh Allen is goaded waiting. I I will admit that when the Bills drafted Josh Allen, I was not I'm an analytics guy. I like I enjoy analytics. I enjoy data. I uh, that's some of my favorite aspects of sports to the point where like I kind of follow baseball just because it's like the best analytic sport and has hundreds of years of stats. I really enjoy that aspect of sports. So when Josh Allen got drafted, I was definitely in the camp of there's this infamous article. If you're a Bills fan, you know this article. There's this infinite article and I'm going to butcher the title, but it essentially said something like if Josh Allen works out, the Bills will have defeated uh, <laughs> all the all the all the mock drafts all the people on the internet and math or something like that like just like the harshest title but i was definitely one of the people that thought that like maybe 10 percent chance that josh allen worked out that, like 90 percent fail rate 10 percent 10 percent he hits the upside of josh allen is if that 10 percent hits you have arguably the best quarterback in the nfl so like it's a super high risk high reward pick and 
it ended up working out. I still think that that math is not incorrect, that there was relatively low odds. But one of the things that analytics misses, and it can't be accounted for in the numbers, is is personality. This is something you see more and more. I realize more and more with having a, like siblings that play D1 sports and so forth. Like it's easy to forget that. <laughs> And I think this goes for magic people too, uh, or whatever, whoever you're watching in streams or on YouTube, but like they're people too. <laughs> and that's, they're actually people first. They just happen to do this thing. So when you see some kid playing, you know, basketball in college, or you see Josh Allen going to the NFL, it's easy in our brains. I should be sideboarding, shouldn't I? It's easy in our brains. Oh God. Oh dear. Oh, we should have sideboarded way, 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 way quicker. It's easy in our brains to, to think of them like these machines that play sports and not people. And we forget that, and we forget that they're humans and they got human emotions. And some people go to practice and some people want to go out partying. Like some people put in the effort. Some people, maybe they miss a shot or like have a bad game. And we forget that maybe they broke up with their boyfriend or girlfriend, or maybe they, you know, have all this like real life stuff going on. We forget all that stuff that they're like real people behind that. And I think that's the thing with Alan. Like my perception, and obviously I don't know Alan more than anyone else does. Like I see him on TV playing football, but it seems like Alan's someone who really worked hard and like had the desire to like improve himself and put the effort in to like improve all his footwork and all that stuff. So I think that's like, that's something analytics misses. You see the numbers and you see people with these, you know, this body and these stats work out this percentage of the time, but you forget that, well, uh, there's actually people there and you know, people make choices and those choices lead to different outcomes or whatever. So, Elliot Dragon, thank you for the raid. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Oh, Alan, we were talking. It was actually the example. Actually, was football. Josh Allen, who is an American American football player for the team that for Buffalo, which is the team that's closest to where I live. So I kind of follow him. But I think that's a good thing to remember. Like, remember it with people, you know, on YouTube or Magic or social media, like. Yeah, it's easy to think of them as like, oh boy, Manatide number seven, and it's a good one. We we think of them as like these faceless, faceless beings. They're they're across the computer screen. They don't seem like real people. And I think like remembering that they're real people has a lot of value in in a lot of different aspects of life. But that's something I try to remember. When you see like, when you see someone, it comes up on social media all the time. There's always like. There's always someone on social media, on Twitter, on Instagram, saying something ridiculous. And rather than like flame out over it or like take in, you know, quote tweet them with a, how they're so stupid and whatever, I try to be like, oh, you know, they're probably not having the best day. Like who who knows what's going on in that person's life that, that, that that's that's a take they had. Like who who knows all those things? So I don't know. Remember, remember the, there's a person there. Hey Seth, about, oh no, you're gonna make me say that again. Palantir, plan, Planeteer, plan, Planeteer of Ornthak. Does cards like Marlin or opponents Narset force the mill? All right, let me, let me look this up again. Palantir of Ornthak. So let's read this card real quick. Oh, so Spear 2. Oh. Little does our opponent know the wreckage is going to be settled here. Opponent gets in. We're not going to. Well, you know, actually, maybe we should have blocked. Our opponent might play around settle now that they've seen it. Oh, another mana dive. They might play around settle now that they've seen it, though. All right. Well, we will pass the turn. All right. Let's read this card real quick. So, at the beginning of your end step, put an influence counter on it and scry two. Then, target opponent may have you draw a card. If that player doesn't, you mill X cards, where X is the number of influence counters on it, and that player loses like equal to the total mana value of those cards. Uh, so if the opponent has a NAR set that says you can't draw more than one card each turn or whatever, uh, could that would not prevent them from choosing that mode on Planetar. Uh, so I don't think there is any way... I don't think there is any way that you can con uh, control your opponent's choice. I don't think it's possible that you can that you can control your opponent's choice. I think we just wait. I think we just block. 
like we're kind of okay with this dying because if this dies then they'll attack with the token next turn presumably hmm yeah you know what let's just on second thought if we're gonna get a pump spell out of the other hand too maybe we'll just settle them i was thinking they just bolt our face or something oh opponent you better have some basics if you do not put two basics on the battlefield we are going to strip mine oh <laughs> Oh, opponent, opponent chose, they chose to play zero basics in their deck. Oh, opponent, you are about to get max punished for your greed. <laughs> I can't believe how good Field of Ruin is in this format. People, what is it with historic players not playing basics? What is going on, historic players? Have, have some, <laughs> have some self-respect. You gotta put at least a basic in there, at least one. <laughs> so greedy. So now they can't even cast the Luris because we strip mine them off Luris mana. <laughs> Kroki calls basics boomer lands. Well, uh, I mean, I call playing no basics. <laughs> I don't even know. I don't even know. Opponent just lost because they didn't play basics. <laughs> does does Kroki actually try to believe in not playing basics? I mean, I do think people play too many basics. I do think people play too many basics. I don't. I, I'm a big believer that you have to have a basic though. Like, what's the what's the cost? You're playing a deck like this, so you're playing Naya Naya Prowess. I guess this would be. You're playing Naya Prowess. You want to have a low land count. You want all your lands to play uh, come into play untapped. Obviously, if we're gonna hit you with you know four Field of Ruins, you're gonna have problems. But is there really a cost to play? a basic land because it's not just demolition field and field of ruin there's ghost quarter there's besage you like it can't be correct right it, it can't be correct to play zero is it i feel the same way in modern too like whenever i see someone play literally zero basics i i think it's got to be wrong i don't know i i'm a believer in like one to two basics assassin's trophy is another one to me the the risk is too high to play zero although i guess like <sighs> I guess I also build decks as if I was playing against myself sometimes, I think. So maybe I'm overly afraid of people trying to like ghost quarter me and strip mine lock me because that's something I would do to other people. So I'm always like, oh no, they're, I'm going to run to that one person that's, you know, trying to get me with Field of Ruin. So I got to hit my basics. <laughs> so maybe, maybe I'm just overly afraid of it because that's what I like to do to other people. So I expect other people to do it to me. Yeah, that's that's my take. Like, I there I have plenty of decks that have one basic. Two or three is probably the most common number. I think once you get up to like five or something, unless you're unless you're monocolor or two color or have a certain a specific reason to play a lot of basics, then I think then you're probably hurting your mana by playing too many basics. Civilized people don't destroy others' lands. That's fair. I just, I just blood moon them. They're still there. They're just mountains now. <laughs> that's a civilized. That's a civilized. The prim and proper <clears throat> way to mess with your opponent's mana base. <laughs> I would never blow up a land, but <laughs> if your lands are mountains now, that's that's not my fault. <laughs> Should have played more basics. <laughs> uh, what do we order for dinner? What are what are the options? You know what? You know what I realized when I was in uh, in Baltimore for the SCG Con. I realized that DoorDash is like really awesome. <laughs> I I am almost to the point where I'm like, man, I should just like move. Why am I living in the middle of nowhere where I can't do any of these things? The ability to just be like, you know, I want food here in a half hour from wherever is like, that's so incredibly convenient. <laughs> robotic by choice welcome to the fishbowl yeah tacos is always a good choice you can never go never go too wrong with tacos welcome to the fishbowl thank you so elves oh elves interesting thank you so much for your subscription big super for you thank you thank you thank you thank you well there's a one ring how do we navigate the elven the elven onslaught we do have our one main deck settle which is huge hopefully Hopefully, old Crusher over there is not watching this. Opponent, Elvish Warmaster, goes to combat. Gets in. Ha ha! You have activated our Sam card. 
The ring will tempt us. We will block your war master. I'll play the land and pass the turn. I mean, we only need one more mana for the one ring. We're almost there. Uh, about it. Land of War Elves. Should we be killing this? Probably. Alright, let's kill the War Master. Get that out of there. Oh, uh, boom it. Get them for two. Not a land. Alright, well, pass the turn. Yeah, I am absolutely shocked that Path isn't on Arena. Path seems like a very safe for Arena style card. Ooh, all right. Uh, Archdruid, not yet. We will grant you a reprieve. Where's our lands? Oh, uh, bonus. Gonna go attacking. Uh huh, uh huh. And land for the One Ring. There we go. All right, play the land. Play the One Ring. Start the Fun Ring. Pass the turn. Okay, so opponent can play the Elf Lord, but we can kill it. And now we get to start drawing cards. Yeah, 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 yeah. Elvish Archdruid returns. Opponent. <laughs> Going to learn a lesson about the One Ring. Yeah. We take zero. We draw a card. We untap. We play a land. Hmm. So if we won and then exile, uh, we got to kill this Archdruid, right? We have to. I guess we can just draw now. Let's draw and see if we have stuff to pitch. Another one ring. Well, this is awkward, but let's exile Sam. Exile Sam. Get rid of the Elvish Archdruid. I mean, that's one of the synergies of this deck, too, is, like, the One Ring draws us so many cards that we can pretty freely pitch them to, like, March of Otherworldly Light. Hey, Seth, how many of the Mountain Goats mountains are you getting? Incredibly niche product, and I love it. That product's so cool. I actually, like, unironically love the Mountain Goats as well. Like... <laughs> It's it's really cool that he's a part of the magic community and loves magic, but he also just makes really good music. I, uh, he makes really good music. Now well, let's wandering emperor. Make a two two block your one ones. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I have you noticed this about secret layers? Do you feel like the value is getting worse? That's something I've recently recently kind of realized. It feels like. It feels like the value offered by a lot of secret layer drops is is dropping, if that makes any amount of sense. Wow, are we just going to go max greed? We could die. One, two, three. One, two, three, four. You know, let's just pass. I feel like the... I feel like the... The value... I feel like the value is dropping. Like, I noticed that severely with the most recent ones. And not to say that they're bad. I'm not I'm not trying to be like overly critical or anything like that. This isn't a like let's, you know, complain about magic thing or whatever. That's not the that's not the idea. But what struck me is just like if you just look at the cards in the drops, there used to be some pretty valuable ones where like bitter blossoms and uh, the ur dragon one with those commanders. Like there were some really expensive ones. Now it seems like sure the art's cool like the art hasn't gotten worse if anything the art's probably gotten better but like random common random common tiny bones kind of good bulk rare bulk rare like just i don't know i feel like they aren't putting as good of cards even like this one waste and i love the card but it's not worth anything neck is our popular commander but it's not really worth anything underworld dreams isn't like i don't know I feel like they're just... Uh, the Lord of the Rings one is the absolute... What? Okay, that's a... That's a casual 1818. Well, even Mind Sensor. Demolition Field. All right, no, 
No basic in the top. No basic in the top four. No basic in the top four. Did you find one? Oh, opponent. Opponent with the high roll. Okay, that's that's fine. I mean, we're not gonna lose to Imperiosaur, right? We're we're good. We're good. Opponent attacks. We'll keep our Wandering Emperor. Take our beats. Make a samurai. Play a land. Hit you for two. Pass the turd. The Lord of the Rings one is definitely the worst. Like, oh my goodness. It's it's almost like embarrassing. I mean, I guess they're just trying to sell it to Lord. Like, that maybe makes it worse. Maybe they're trying to sell it to Lord of the Rings fans who have no idea what magic cards cost. The art is the art is sweet. Like, uh, the art's really sweet. And that's true of many of these lair drops. But, oh, come on, Wazzy. Put, put some more value in there. I mean, I guess we'll see with... I guess we'll see with the... Oh, wait. Do they have a mana dork? No, no, no. Oh, <laughs> Oh, yes. Oh, wait, 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 wait. Five, six, seven. Okay, so we have to do this slightly differently. Soul partition. Green spells can't be countered. So soul partition bounce this thing. Now we can up our mana tithe count on the Coco. And then opponent. They think they're going to get us. They think they're going to get us. They think it. <laughs> and they are wrong. <laughs> oh, I love Settle the Wreckage. <laughs> Sorry, Crusher. Sorry. And they only get to look at their top four because they have a mind sensor. The one ring does its thing. We'll go to combat. We'll smack you a bit. <laughs> <laughs> this deck is this deck is so fun. This deck just gets people. It just gets them. Uh, well, yeah. Let's actually no no no. We got to draw first. We can't pass up the chance to draw four cards here. Draw a million cards. Play another copy of the One Ring. Keep the new one. Gain protection. Blow up your Besaju. You got a basic in the top four. You got basic? You got basic in the top? Oh, they do have a basic in the top four. Uh, we will pitch a mind sensor. Get rid of your mana dork, and that was a good turn. That was a good turn. Queerdip, welcome to the fishbowl. Thank you so much for your subscription. Big scoop chip for you. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. The one ring's busted. It is like just straight up busted. <laughs> Yeah, did I? I didn't add that one to the count, did I? I feel like this has been, not only have we gotten a lot of mana ties, we have gotten some really good mana ties. We've gotten like Teferis and Cocos. These aren't just like, sometimes with mana ties, you just fire it off because you can and you got to and you want to, you know, get any value you can out of it. But we have had some like really backbreakingly good <laughs> mana ties with this deck. Yeah, we're going to draw. We'll be fine. How bad? How bad can it possibly be? Um, well, go to combat. Attack, yeah. Actually, can we just tempo them out by playing more one rings? We have two more in hand. We probably can. Draw with one ring. Play another one ring. I think we... Boy. Keep the new one. Get protection. Pretty busted. Play the land discard a land and a land and looking pretty good looking pretty good <laughs> yeah i mean i guess just looping one rings is is pretty gg there about it uh, about it yeah we've been we've been averaging pretty good pretty good when Marlin is on the battlefield, a player can't choose to draw cards or the choice of other player draw cards. For example, if you cast a development side of research development, blah, 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 um, you'll put three elemental tokens on the battlefield because your opponent can't let you draw cards. Really? Let me, okay, let's see. 
Marlene of the Mornzog. Uh, well, how about a Archangel Avacyn? Which I think is just lethal, right? Go to combat, hit you with the flyers, and... Sorry, elves! Sorry, elves! Okay. Players, uh, at the beginning of each player's draw step, players can't draw cards. Period. Second ability, at the beginning of each player's draw step, that player loses three life, searches their library for a card, puts it in their hand, and then shuffles. So, if you played this, and Palantir of Orthanc, <laughs> if the being a red step, put a counter on it, target opponent may have you draw a card. If the player doesn't, you mill X cards. Where X so, that might actually, does it actually work by the rules? Maybe it does. So, if Marlin says players can't draw cards... Then target player may have you draw a card if that player doesn't. So I guess even if they wanted to choose draw a card, you wouldn't draw a card. So it wouldn't happen and then you'd have to mill. I think that that actually seems like it might work. The big... <laughs> we've played Marlin before. Marlin is... Marlin's a toughie. Marlin is a toughie. The big problem with Marlin is... Uh, the Samwise plan doesn't seem actually very effective against this deck. Like this is a this is a tough deck to <laughs> to actually lock out of the uh, out of the game with Ghost Quarters. I don't know if it's actually possible. Containment Priest though at least hits Coco, so that's something. The Fairies Pro could keep us alive for a turn. Reprieve Mana Tithe. How do we win? How do we win against elves? Can we win against elves? Yeah, maybe we don't, Teferi's Pro. Mana Tive. Going on like one reprieve. Oh, boy, something like that. My deck's all over the place now. The big issue with Marlin is. <clears throat> and it would still work with the combo. This, I don't think this really impacts the combo. But because you let your opponent tutor, if your opponent doesn't want Marlin out, it's very easy for them. So, like, you play Marlin, your opponent, like, untaps. They're like, oh, I get to Grim Tutor. They Grim Tutor up a Doom Blade, or not a Doom Blade because it's a black creature. But you know what I mean? They just uh, do a Path to Exile, whatever. You choose a removal spell and then kill the Marlin. So I think there we'd have to figure out a way around that. Like, that's kind of the, the issue. Like... If we're trying to make a lock with Palantir, 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 uh, this card, the bowling ball, the big Lebowski bowling ball, if we're trying to make a lock with that, we'd have to figure out a way to keep Marlin on the battlefield, assuming that that wor even works. I'm not 100% convinced that that's how the rules work, and Marlin like, keeps the player from choosing. I think it's also possible... I think it's also possible that how this would work would be Marlin says players can't draw cards. You go to your end step, your opponent's like, I choose to have you draw a card. And Marlin's like, no. And then you're like, oh, my pillager doesn't do anything because they told me to draw a card. They chose to have me draw a card, but Marlin disallowed it. I'm still not 100% sure that that, that that is the correct ruling. I'd really have to check with the judge. I'm 50-50 on which way that would go. About it. Opposition agent. Opposition agent would do it. That's a that's especially brutal. Oh, hmm. Um. Oh. Yeah, I think we gotta. Actually, you know what? Whatever. You you can keep it for a turn. Sure. Manadork. Manadork survives. Opponent. Castle Garen Brig. Sweekle of Dreams Druid. That's a lot of manas. Opponent passes. We'll play the land. I guess we pass. Come on, Coco. How about Cocoing into our containment priest opponent? <laughs> Someone. Let me see if I can remember this card. Hmm. <clears throat> One, two, three, they're gonna have four mana. Ugh, okay. 
opponent. Oh, okay. Well, sure. We will, we will kill your circle of dreams, Druid. Uh, plan land, march of otherworldly. That was, I don't know about that attack by our opponent. That seemed like a sketchy one. Leaf crown, Dryad. Oh, I don't know if I can find the card. So there's a card. Oh, here it is. Psychic, psychic overload. So someone sent me this. It's a really cool against the odds idea. Whew, where are the Hydra getting in for the big two? I don't play the land past the turn. So someone sent me this card. The idea was to combine it with the one ring. Psychic Overload. I forgot this was a card. Four mana aura. Enchanted permanent. When it ETBs, tap enchanted permanent. Enchanted permanent doesn't untap during its controller's unstap, untap step. Enchanted permanent has discard two artifacts, untap this permanent. That actually seems like a really cool idea for comboing with uh, with the One Ring. You stick this on the ring, and then as long as you have a bunch of artifacts in your deck, you just like tap and untap and draw through your entire deck in one turn. Doesn't that look like a cool idea? I'm, we're going to have to try to build that. And apparently no one's thought of it before, because it's still like, it's 20 years old, never been reprinted, but it's still like, no one. <laughs> 25 cents, 49 cent foil, no one's, no one's been buying this card. No one knows it's a thing. So yeah, we might have to actually try to do, oh, are they going to play into it? Come on, come on, get in that damn. This L, poor Crusher. Crusher McCormick never learns about the saddle. <laughs> oh, I usually expect to get someone with saddle once, but Crusher just keeps, just keeps crushing, crush, crushing, going right for it. <laughs> no fear. I mean, I can respect the lack of fear, but it is not helping the win percentage, I don't think. Collected company, that is a good one. Yeah, all right. Can't stop it. Uh, about it. Yeah. Well, Mind Over Matter is not legal in many formats. That's the that's the big issue with Mind Over Matter. Although, Paradox Engine. Oh, there's the Containment Priest. Paradox Engine might actually just be easier. That might be, that might be similar but easier. Yeah, Mind Over Matter combos really easily, but that one, that one would be Legacy or Commander only. All right, opponent. Are you going for it? Are you going to kill us with your War Master? Okay. Atroxus Fall. There goes our... Who, you can't play around the second one, can you? You can't, you can't play around the possibility of a second Settle the Wreckage. You can't. Well, maybe our opponent can. Okay. Because they played around... <laughs> This deck actually seems hard to play around. You play around the settle, we get you with the Wandering Emperor because you didn't attack enough. <laughs> but if you don't play... Oh, there's another one. But if you don't play around the settle... If you don't play around the settle, then we'll settle all your all of your stuff. How about it? Come on, about it. Come on, about it. Walk right into it. You gotta get rid of that Wandering Emperor. You gotta get rid of it. You can't let that live. That's gonna make a 2-2 next turn. It's gonna make a 2-2 crusher. You can't have that. All right, bonus makes a bunch of five fives. Oh, this almost is painful. Our opponent, our opponent just keeps guessing wrong. <laughs> they just keep guessing wrong. No matter what they pick, it's just the wrong choices game. <laughs> oh, all right. We'll make a, we'll make a two-two. We'll play a land. We'll pass the turn. <laughs> About it, Elvish Archdruid. The only thing that would make this better is if they actually, actually get to a Coco and we get to, we get to get it with. The containment priest that would just be the full the full-on blowout well get in with our door can't you yeah i i'm feeling a little bit bad <laughs> i'm feeling a little because i feel like our opponent didn't really do anything wrong they were actually like they made an attempt to play around the saddle the wreckage they seem to be playing well and like making decent choices just everyone is 
<laughs> Everyone is not worked out. Whatever choice they do make just ends up not working out the way they're hoping it does. Hey, thank you, Val. Yeah, Days and Days is one of my one of my favorite acoustic punk bands. Another Imperiosaur? Alright. Sure, sure, sure. That's a big in. Well, let's play Containment Priest. This is what? Ward 2, right? Or Yes, alright. Bounce Imperiosaur. Pay the two. Take up. On the Containment Priest. Go attacking. March of Otherworldly Light. Get rid of the Arch Druid. And I guess we I guess we might as well do this. We have a bunch of bunch of demolition fields aren't doing anything. This deck actually felt pretty good. Like it's kind of working. I don't know if it's great, but it's kind of working, and it's certainly, it's certainly got to be obnoxious to play against. All right, opponent, what do you got now, friend? Little do they know, we still have one, we still have one more settle left. If somehow things go wrong, we still have another settle. If they play this Imperiosaur, that's going to be obnoxious. We don't really have a way to attack through that. Yeah. Oh, heaven's in sweet though. Well, make a make a two two. Guards, Pass it. Oh, how does our opponent guess this time? How do we guess this time, opponent? <laughs> Are you attacking? Are you not attacking? <laughs> the choice is yours, opponent. Karn the Great Creator. Okay, that's a that's a legit scary card. Now I now I'm a little bit worried. Karn is frightening, opponent. Taken down. I was not expecting Karn out of elves. Worm coil. Plays worm coil. About it. Combat. Are we attacking? <laughs> you can see our opponent there. They don't know what to do. They don't know what to do. How about an Avacyn? And block, 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 block. <laughs> we'll kill it that way. Everything's indestructible. <laughs> <laughs> An opponent scoops it up. I was expecting the one ring too. That that seemed like the most obvious choice. This deck, this deck actually kind of feels good. What is our record? What is our record with this deck? I don't know. I kind of just want to. I kind of. Are you enjoying watching this deck? I kind of want to just keep playing this deck, and maybe we'll play Devotion next stream. Oh, also speaking of next stream, I'm not sure if there'll be a stream Tuesday or not. Tuesdays. Tuesday's 4th of July here in the U.S., which is kind of like a, a semi-major holiday. So I might be, I might be barbecuing on, on, a uh, on Tuesday. So if I'm, if I'm not doing anything, I'll still try to do a stream. But I think odds are, odds are in favor, I would say, of probably not having a stream on Thursday. Not fun for the opponent. I mean... <laughs> Those are my those are my favorite decks. We're going easy on them because we could be playing we could be playing Turbo Fog right now. I'm just saying. Like this is this is light mode. This is light mode if we're worried about our opponent's feelings. <laughs> There's no blood moons. There's no turbo fogs. This is just good, clean, fair magic. Also, if they play Crucius, we're gonna manatize that so hard. Also Yeah, I think we I think we also do that to Fable. Mana Dive, number 10. 10 in one stream's not bad. That's a, that's a good day at the office for Mana Dive. We should be able to get a couple more, hopefully, too. I wonder how many basics this deck plays. We might fire off an early basic check. About it. Opponent. 
Crucius. Uh, yeah, we would rather not have you do that yet. Now let's play a land, play a one ring. Get the card draw going. Broken. All right, now our mono white deck is going to severely outdraw you, opponent. <laughs> opponent, there's the Crucius, sure. Oh, Bear gets, Bear gets treats every day. Bear gets treats every day. Oh, we didn't miss our chance to draw, did we? Oh, no. Hopefully not. I need to... I need to take Bear... I need to take Bear to the lake. I live not too far from Lake Ontario. I've never actually taken Bear to the lake, uh, though. He loves water. So I imagine... I imagine he would actually really love the lake. Can we get a land, the one ring? Okay, there's there's a land. Hmm. What's March of Otherworldly light? <laughs> Look at all these colorless lands. So many colorless lands. Opponent has four cards in hand. All right, March of Otherworldly light. Pitching a Sam. Getting rid of Crucius. We're gonna have to discard hand size anyway. Yeah, I think I think he would enjoy it. So that's on my list of stuff we gotta do. Opponent also has one ring. They, I know they're called the Great Lakes, but Lake Ontario being called a lake is going to be kind of weird. Those lakes are huge. Yeah, I think, I think you get like kind of desensitized to it if you live there. Like it just becomes normal, <laughs> the hugeness of them. Probably like if you're, probably like if you're living uh, by like the ocean or something. Like if you live in the ocean. Maybe you don't appreciate the enormity of it as much. I feel like I feel like the Great Lakes are kind of like that too. Is Turbo Fog possible on Arena? Oh yeah, there's there's a <laughs> I'm working on a video for Turbo Fog. Uh, it's possible because of the One Ring mostly, like. If you think about what the One Ring actually it does, wait, oh, they got a basic. They did, I wasn't paying enough attention. They did get a basic, right? Okay, they did. Uh, sure, we will pass. If you think about the, what the Run Ring actually does though, it's it's really a it's really a fog, right? The protection from everything is essentially a fog, except it's a fog that also draws an absurd amount of magic cards. Like, it's, it's super duper perfect for It's super duper perfect for a, for a Turbo Fog deck, almost like it was built for it. How many basics are you playing over there, opponent? How many basics are you playing? Okay, at least two. Well, we will Samwise to get back the Field of Ruin. Well, we will run them out eventually. I guess maybe we should just do this too. Bound your one ring. All right. Thought sees a way, opponent. Thought sees a way. The one ring, it is. It's like the best fro fog ever printed. Tilbert Fog is fully playable even in Explore without the one ring. Really? Do you have a deck list? The one ring, so card. So, I mean, so far it's the, the kind of powerful that I'm still enjoying to play with, but I feel like I feel like I'm gonna get sick of this card before super long. All right, opponent, children, and kills our Samwise and land and passes. Well, okay. 
One, two, three, four. Exile Wandering Emperor. Get rid of Shield Red. Play a field. How many how many lands can they how many basics can they have? How many can they have? It can't be that many, right? Well, play the land, pass the turn. Opponent. Use your own Turbo Fog Ren. Goblins was everywhere in historic. Oh yeah, it is. It's kind of built to be good against goblins. Alright, another one ring. Well, we will get rid of Crucius. March otherworldly light, stronger than alchemy. Draw a few million magic cards. There's the mind sensor. That that is one of the cards we were looking for. Okay. So we take our beats. I think we attack the mana. Avon Mind Sensor. Field of Ruin. Blow up your red source. Do you have a basic in the top? No. Field of Ruin. Blow up your red source. Do you have a basic in the top? Oh, oh, strip mines activated. Maybe we should have strip mine counter. March of Otherworldly Light, X4. Settle Wandering Emperor. Get rid of your one rig. What a turd, what a turd. All right, opponent, your go. How is life with no red mana? Another black source. Invoke despair. That is obnoxious. Okay, we will draw a million cards. Drop to one. Well, I guess that means we gotta play this one ring, doesn't it? One ring. Keep the new one. Okay, this is a little scary. This is a little bit sketchy. Past the turn. Discard a... We had to deal 17? Oh, that's so much damage. Okay. Opponent. Red source. She old red. Well, um... Bounce that. Opponent passes. Play the land. Pass the turn. Inquisition. Um, okay. What's Wandering Emperor? Oh, I don't know if this is going to work out or not. I'm actually kind of nervous about where we're at now. We drew a bunch of cards, but we can't use our one ring anymore. Opponent takes the reprieve. Like, that shield red's going to get us eventually. And we can't use the one ring until we find a way to gain life. Opponent, another Crucius. Hmm. I mean, I guess we just gotta let Crucius live? It doesn't feel good, but I guess that's what we gotta do. Avacyn. Oh, this actually, <laughs> this actually works. Take up Wandering Emperor. Has a counter. Fizzle it. All right, Avacyn. So opponent gets to discard. Discard's a heartless act. Ambitious is what? Something more expensive. This card's so ridiculous. More expensive. All right. We take zero. Mana tithe. Well, we got to go for it. They, they probably have a basic. How many basics do they play? 
Oh, they're out. Okay, they're out. They're out. They're out. So take down Wandering Emperor. Go to combat. Get in with Avacyn. Hit you to 11. Play another one ring. I feel like... I feel like we might be getting there. I feel like this might work. Opponent, she old red. Okay. That's fine. We can soul partition it. Tap land. Do we win? Bounce the shield red. Opponent passes. We take zero. Another soul partition. One, two, three, four, five. Cave of the Frost Dragon. Take up on the token. Remember your training. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Soul partition it. Do we beat the alchemy? Do we beat the alchemy? Do we beat the alchemy? Oh, we got him. <laughs> oh, even alchemy can't stop us. Wow, we took down Crucius. Hey, what's up, Duke? How are you? Good to see you. Good to see you. Wow, I kind of love this deck. I can. <laughs> this deck's kind of crushing people. We just kind of tempoed our way through. Oh, what was what was the punt? What did I do? Uh, what did I do wrong? Well. Oh, wait. What free card draw did I miss? Oh, when I legend rule the ring. Yeah, 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 yeah. You're right. Yep, yep, yep. We should have... Uh, should have tapped in response. The, the tapping does not deal the damage. The damage comes on the upkeep. So you can tap for free whenever you want to, and it doesn't do anything except draw your cards. Yeah, that's that's a good, uh, a good thing to remember. Yeah, Evans is actually pretty good in this deck. Hmm. So two basics, two basic swamps. That is that is the number we need to overcome. Two basic swamps. I don't think I would have missed five cards. Did I really? Missing five. Missing one. I remember that. I don't remember missing five, but maybe I did. Oh, uh, the One Ring is... <laughs> I also did not expect it to perform so well. I'm saying it right now, calling it. This card is either getting banned or errata. Like, there's... <laughs> there's I mean, maybe it'll adjust. I'm not calling for a banning. That's just how powerful I think it is. Like, I did not expect it to be... I expect it to be okay. Like, I thought it was a good commander card. I thought it might have some uses in formats like Modern. But I didn't expect it to be you know, some format defining card or whatever. That was not, that was not my expectation for it to be something that was going to just like change formats. It is a format defining card. Like it is, the power is off the charts. Uh, well, modern for sure. It's a, I mean, so it is unfortunately super expensive, but this is a amazing commander card. So great, 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 great commander card. I don't know how much you see it in commander just because is it really worth paying $70 for, yeah, we'll try this. We haven't kept a one lander in a minute. Is it really worth it to pay $70 for a upgraded, very upgraded Frexine arena that can go in any deck? I think a lot of people are going to say no, but it is of a power level that it should be a commander all-star that you can play in any deck. It is kind of revolutionizing modern at the moment. It's all over the place in a ton of different decks like it's it's been shockingly good in modern and then i think it's also oh, we got lucky and drew some lands i think it's also very good in historic too the one the one lander paid off the magic gods i mean we're we're playing mono white counter spells the magic gods smile upon that archetype you gotta know you gotta know what decks the magic gods will allow you to draw lands with there's a whole it's a whole thing it's a whole thing um Hmm. So we can't really stop this, right? We can reprieve, but it doesn't do anything. Oh, 
they're gonna take our Sam. I mean, I guess we run out the Sam. I would have liked to get more value out of it, but all right, run out the Sam, get a body, sure. About it. Takes a reprieve and passes. Well, get in with the Sam, hit ya. Pass the turret powder down at 16. About it. She old red. Well, we will bounce that. And about it passes. Well, play the land, go to combat, get in, hit you with the Sam. About and she old red sure and tap land well all right restoration angel blink the sam yes be tempted by the ring rest of the ring bearer draw get drain she older it hits us field of ruin march of otherworldly light for Four. Actually, yeah, let's. This is actually way better. Skyclave. This make. I don't know what I was thinking. Why we're doing it hard mode? Like, yes, just, just get it with the Skyclave. Way better. We get to loot. Discard a land. Hit ya. Down to nine. Past the turn. Opponent. Even more shield reds, okay. And a tap land. Well, okay. March for. F you know what? One, two. Yeah, we'll just. I was thinking we should pitch the mana tithe, but I think we'll keep it. I don't think it's gonna do anything, but. Alright, get rid of the shield red. Go attacking, loot, discard one of our mana dies, hit you at a two. Cat. What a dominant performance against like the best deck of the four bat. About it. Scoops it up. Wild in the ring. Oh, I didn't mention that on stream. I so I talked about this in a uh, in a in a short and on Twitter. So this actually, I'm glad you brought that up about the bundles. So <clears throat> little little bit of advice. Right now in paper, the one ring. And this is not the one of one ring, not the not the serialized one or anything. Just getting a one ring. Yeah, that felt really good. Just like uh, the tempo plan kind of against the alchemy deck, even the best deck in the format. That felt really good. Um, so the one ring, depending on the version, is somewhere between 55 and 70 bucks. It's an expensive magic card. But something that not everyone realized, although we've been talking about it the last couple days, is the bundles. Used to be called fat packs, but those uh those bundles that come with like eight set booster packs or whatever if you buy one of those you're guaranteed four promo cards in them those four promo cards frodo samwise Gollum, in the one ring we have never had a bundle promo that was anywhere near that expensive like normally bundle promos are like kind of kind of throwaway cards for the most part like they're okay some of them are like decent rares we've never had one that was anything like this though so if you are looking for the one ring and you can find the bundle at a decent price that's the other thing they're super expensive on amazon now definitely check with your lgs if your lgs is selling them for a reasonable price grab one i think reasonable is like a great price is around 50 bucks the price that you find them most places is like 65 to 75 somewhere in that range uh so if you find one in that range you're getting a one ring that's 55 bucks and eight set booster packs a cool spin down like uh the nine decent ish fat pack box or bundle box definitely worth it um and if your LGS doesn't have one, check the, yeah, the GameStops, Walmarts, Targets, because those places don't price based on magic. <laughs> Something you run into sometimes with magic stores, like you see on Amazon, uh, is, is you, they're, they price based on, um, uh, on the demand so if something's really popular prices go up we see that all the time with booster boxes so you might see stores that are selling in bundles for a hundred bucks if they're really into magic but like walmart target 
GameStop, they just sell it for whatever their MSRP is. So, uh, so you can get them for a really good price if you run into them. Feels like Modern could adjust. I, uh, maybe. I, I hope Modern will adjust. I mean, we will see. There's a, there's a Modern Pro Tour. So, we know that the next BNR, the... I almost wonder if Wizards planned this. Like, I almost wonder in this case, and this is, might be super tinfoil hatty, but I almost wonder if Wizards knew. <laughs> if you actually look at the, the time frame of things, so we are like, what, two days before the end of June. So we're at the end of June. There's a pro tour coming up in July, and then Wizards uh, has already said they're doing, oh, this might be a tough matchup. Wizards has already said that, uh, there will be bannings in in August. That is the big mandate, the beginning beginning of August. I almost wonder. I almost wonder if Wizards like knew the One Ring was on the upper. Wow! They're playing one. They're playing one. They're really playing one basic. Why would you play one basic in a two color angel deck? Oh, you're gonna you're gonna pay the price for that opponent. Oh, we are not gonna let no no no. We're not gonna let that go. We're not gonna let that go. We're gonna sam that field of ruin back to our hand. Wow, the greed. The greed. <laughs> Magic Arena players so greedy. Wow. Everyone must be watching Crokey's. Everyone must be watching Crokey streams, and we are taking advantage of it. <laughs> oh, yeah, I mean, I guess we just get rid of this. If our opponent ever <laughs> ever draws a land, they might do something. Yeah, we'll get rid of that. Opponent discards the hand size because they don't believe in basics for some reason. <laughs> oh, we'll play a land. Go to... Oh, I guess we should have fired up the... I think we should have fired up the creature land. That would have been the correct play. About it. <laughs> With the shame scope. Hey, what's up, Johnny? <laughs> I can't believe how greedy these arena players are. Kids these days. Kids these... Back in my day. <laughs> we, we've walked uphill in basics both ways to school. <laughs> in 80 degree... Days full of snow. <laughs> Kids these days don't even know what a basic land is. <laughs> oh, jeez. <laughs> oh, the... I mean, I'm not gonna complain. I hope everyone watches Croaky stream and plays Zero Basics. <laughs> please, please play less. I will keep doing this to you. <laughs> I can't believe a single basic and one basic versus an angel deck to stop things like this. Yeah, I mean, they played one. They played one. There was a single basic planes that the, did not last long. Yeah, I mean, if you... See, that's a thing. I think it's a partly a generational thing. If you're an arena player, you don't expect people to go after your lands. Like, you probably think a Field of Ruin is that card that, like, stops a creature land or whatever. You don't expect that to be a thing. You don't expect people to attack your lands. The the current like arena generation of magic players, they didn't have to deal with that. But if you're someone who <laughs> has played magic for a long time or play like modern or legacy, and you're used to wastelands in strip mines in blood moons, like you, you, you learn to play in like a different way. And you have a different respect for what people can do to your mana base. So it, it doesn't surprise me at all that People who are mostly playing on Arena just don't expect anyone to even try to attack their lands because Wizards has pretty much just taken taken land destruction out of the game. Like, land destruction is not really much of a... not really much of a, a real archetype anymore. Wizards has pretty much just eliminated it from the game altogether. Uh, but that makes it easy to just get people on occasion because of their greed. Does the situation with LTRs that remind you of Modern Horizons 1? I remember people saying, WTF is this EDH set uh, about first Modern Horizons. Oh boy, this hand is greedy. <laughs> you know what? One basic. We're going to try it. We're going to keep the all colorless land hand. Um, so a little bit. So I will say, 
I still think there's like a handful of cards that are going to be good for modern. So I think on some sense, yes, I definitely remember people saying it's an EDH set or whatever. I'm still not really expecting the Lord of the Rings set to have like a wide impact on modern, like a modern horizon set. Instead, I think you see the one ring being way better than I thought at least. And I think most people thought, so you see the one ring being like a format defining card. And then you have like a second tier of like Sam, maybe forge a new delighted halfling. Actually looking at prices is a pretty good, <laughs> the prices actually show this pretty well. Like, uh, so you have the one ring format defining card. You have bow masters, which is actually more for legacy than modern, but still good in modern delighted halfling. Really, really good. Once you get beyond that, you're kind of to the, to the fringe range, more of the like fringe against the odd side of things. Shaper sanctuary. Does that apply to whenever a creature? Okay. As long as we're free to destroy all your lands, you can you can shape away opponent. You can shape away opponent. Untap land in youthful Valkyrie. Mm -hmm. Well, we will play a land. Yield of new and pass the turn. Opponent. Oh yeah, we got the white remand in our deck. Wait, is this a party deck? Is our opponent partying on? Well. Let's get rid of the Shaper Sanctuary. That's step one. Opponent's down to one card, but it is kind of a scary one. Opponent gets and hits us. Can we survive? We need another white source. Oh, Wandering Emperor. All right, Demolition Field. Oh, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know if we're going to be fast enough. Opponent untaps. If they go land Coco... We get pretty wrecked. Opponent combat attacks. Hits us. Down to 13. Well, they didn't play it yet. I still think they have Coco, unfortunately. Wow, what a hand. What a what a hand. That is the that is the curve. That is the perfect curve. One, two, three, four. Righteous Valkyrie. Coco. Lavinia, that is just the that is just the absolutely perfect curve for our opponent. And I don't know if we're gonna have enough time to to stabilize here. You know what we need is settle the wreckage. That's the that is the card that could change the equation. That's the one. Well, wandering Emperor. Take down. Got to get rid of that thing. Come on, settle the wreckage. Come on, settle the wreckage. Yep, bonus X. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Oh, what a draw! That's another righteous Valkyrie. Wow, that is that is the best angel. Okay, settle the wreckage. Got to be now. Got to be now. Gotta be now where the angels got there. Opponent swings. It's us to five. Yes. That is not a Valkyrie. So we just can't answer enough, right? We can kill one thing. We can kill. Uh, yeah, they got there. Mm. Yeah, I mean, there was no way for us to stop them from casting a Coco there. That's kind of the, that's kind of the issue. There's not really any way we can stop that from happening. Even Mind Sensor doesn't seem good, although Containment Priest could stop a Coco. Let's try it like that. Oh, boon it. Oh, White Remand. Yeah, I mean, White Remand for Modern Viability. <clears throat> It's it seemed more play than I expected right away, considering that oh, oh such a good hand if only we had lands. Um considering that Remand sees like essentially zero play in modern, I'm actually surprised at how much play at how much play it's seeing. Like that's that's actually caught me by surprise, honestly. Uh, hmm. Yeah, I guess we got to put a field of ruin to the bottom. Was tempting to keep double field of ruin, but I don't think we'd be that greedy. 
about it. Restoration Angel. Definitely going to need to draw a land. Yada. We need to draw a land to get to the one ring. That is, okay, that's a land to get to the one ring. That's big. So get rid of Giada. We're not gonna do, we're not gonna do these shenanigans already. Well, get that out of there. Untap, play the one ring, see what happens. Can the one ring carry us past angels? Jack Manning, welcome to the fishbowl. Thank you so much for your subscription. Big soup here for you. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank ya. Well, I mean, we're gonna go for it. Land one ring, get the card draw going. Protection from everything. About it. Untap land, Bishop of Wings. We can start attacking our opponent's mana next turn if we want to. Yada. All right, draw a card. Opponent gains a bunch of life. Not ideal. Attacks for zero, sure, sure, sure. We take one. Well, play the planes. Pass the turn. Oh, this is gonna be close. This is gonna be close. There's the one basic, the one and only basic. What are these cards in hand? Strip mines are assembled if we can get their opponent. Attacks, being conservative. Okay, we will draw some cards. And sure, take our beads down to fifteen. Oh, no, Coco. Okay, that's not a Coco, that's a youthful Valkyrie. Sure. Although this Giada is going off, opponent gains a ton of life. Well, okay, strip mine number one. Get rid of the blue source. If we can find a settle the wreckage, we can put it away. Opponent does not have a basic because they're a greedy arena player. Strip mine number two. Well, can we beat what's on the battlefield? Cause we, hey, what's up, Lord uh, Kabodi? Thanks for uh, thanks for swinging by. Strip by number two. Drop to thirteen. Another field of ruin. Oh, we got to deal with multiple things. Well, let's let's one ring. Ooh, those were not those were not exactly the hits we were looking for. Um. Wow, does this mean we're dying? Kind of. Kind of really, yes. Skyclave. Get rid of the Righteous Valkyrie. Field of Ruin. Blow up a Brushland. Get a Plains. Discard a cave. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight. About it. Land. Bishop of Wings. Sure. Goes attacking, goes attacking. We drop to eight. One ring. Well, another one ring's actually not the worst. That's actually pretty good. Okay, so one ring, draw some cards. There's a settle too. Okay, that's that's big. That's real big. That's real, real big. Play a new one ring. Keep the new one ring. Get protection. Demolition field. I think we might get there. Blow up the blue source. <laughs> We are brutally attacking our opponent's mana base here. Brutally grab a planes. 
No attacks. Discard. And discard. And discard. We're keeping the mana ties. We're keeping the mana ties. Opponent. Danny Boy Walsh. Welcome to the fishbowl. Thank you so much for your subscription. Big scoop cheer for you. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Opponent plays around our... Our mana tithe draws another land, grows their dorks. Do they play around the settle the wreckage? That's the real question. That's the real one. Opponent. Gain some life, gets a bunch of triggers. Well. Alright, we will pay zero. What is happening? Okay. Pay zero. Confirm zero. Submit. Oh, you gotta click a million times to kill a token with this. Alright, get rid of the token. Time to get some counters. We untap. Reprieve. Well, demolition field. Blow up the blue source. get a land and let's see how our opponent attacks opponent combat The other thing arena players don't do is play around settle the wreckage. No basics. Don't play around settle. That's the that's the arena way. <laughs> oh my goodness. That was way better than I thought. Alright, let's Oh, wow. So let's let's look at our untap.gg. I feel like I wasn't keeping super close track of the record, but I feel like we we're actually kind of crushing it with this deck. So, all right, mono white draw go. We played, we played nine matches, a ten matches, seven and three, seven and three. That's it. And we were ranking up in mythic. We started at like mythic eighty eight, and we're at what mythic 90, 94, 93, 95. I mean, I feel like the deck might actually be good. I will also say, I will also. Oh. I will also say that I think this might be... <laughs> hey, Bearby. Bear, what are you barking about? Come here, Bear. Come here. Come say hi to everyone. Come, sit by. Come say hi. Come on. Come here, bub. Come say hi, and then I'll take you out. We're almost, we're almost done with the stream, and I'll take you outside. Come say hi. People want to see you. Let's see. People haven't seen you. Where are you? Hey, Bearby. Oh, hey. Ooh, come here. Come here, bub. Oh, you're so big and strong. There you go. Hey, bub. Come here. Come here, bub. Hey, bubby. How are you, puppy? How are you, big puppy? Hey, bubby. How are you? Hey, bubby. What are you barking about? What are you barking about, big boy? You doing okay? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I don't know what he's barking about, but... Yeah, Bear, Bear liked to settle the records too. But the deck actually felt good, so if you're looking for something different to play, I'll also say... Based on how Barbie, shh, shh, I, Bear, Bear, buddy, 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 chill, chill, bud. I will also say based on, based on how this went, it makes me a little bit more excited to, uh, to actually try it in modern. I think it might actually be worth trying in modern just based on this going surprisingly well. So uh, I don't know. I don't know. I really like the deck. If you're looking for something different to mess around with Otterita, I would definitely recommend it because it actually worked pretty well. It plays in like a cool way that just a neat, like tempo-y play pattern, which I think is pretty sweet. You get to play a lot of cool cards. Plus, most importantly, you get to attack people's mana. You get to attack people's, you get to attack people's, uh, with counter spells with mana ties that people just don't expect so i really love the deck but anyway everyone i think 
that brings us to the end uh, for the stream for today bear bear is spoken bear is spoken he needs to uh he needs to go out apparently so uh, if bear's done that means the stream's done reminders on the way out the door merch page check it out discord check it out the youtube you're gonna like tomorrow's modern much of brew definitely check that out uh one more reminder that our sponsor is card kingdom if you need some magical cards you can go over at cardkingdom.com slash mtg goldfish and the biggest and most important thank you to all of you seriously y'all are amazing and awesome and i love y'all i hope you have an amazing night have a great weekend and i'll see you next week to have some more fun tuesday not exactly sure would it be viable invest one i don't see why not like it's not really dependent on sideboard i think it would be viable invest one i might skew a little bit more towards um towards aggro for best of one a little bit more removal maybe but otherwise yeah i think it should work in best of one but anyway everyone thank you so much i love you all you were amazing have an amazing night a great weekend and i will see you next week until then have a good one and i will talk to you soon